and we are back. Welcome back to Talk It Up, everybody. Today's guest, Wes Bannister. How you doing, my guy? Doing well, doing well. How you doing? Doing good. Wesley B. Here. Wesley B. Wesley B. If we're gonna get Wesley B. Uh, Wesley, if we're sounds... gonna be splitting hairs, but Wes, <laughs> Wesley's a. I could be Wesley's, a rap name. Oh, Wesley B. Or Wesley B. Wesley B. And mm. I could be Willie P. Nah, we... <laughs> that's too much. To, that's too close to like the weirdness of Cardi B, and I don't think I would. Ooh, Wesley yeah, B. She, yeah, not it's about like Cardi it. B's cousin. Yeah, see, not about <laughs> it. She too. She too ratchet for me, brother. She it's is not... wild. That lady. Yeah. It's crazy how famous she got quickly. Do you know her yeah. like backstory? Uh, yeah, it was like a stripper for a while and stuff like that, right? Yes, but even or after even that, she was so like that? on a. Yeah, she was like a mega stripper. Oh shit! <laughs> she, would, she would get mega, naked and then peel her skin off. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "What else could I take off?" Like face hugger. <laughs> That'd be pretty wild. Honestly, she, uh, she was, was in one of those shows, like The mm-hmm. Housewives of something. Oh no, or something shit. similar really? to that. Yeah, I didn't know this till afterwards. That and makes then, me hate her even more. I know. I know. Right? <laughs> she was like the. I got like, famous off of being dumb. That's pretty much. Yeah. Uh, didn't they all though? I mean. Well, who are you talking here when you say they all? Okay, that's true. Not yeah. all of them. I was gonna I say, I was gonna say, as much as I hate the Kardashians, I love to shit on them because I hate what they're doing to our the society. And I like how you said, as much not. as I hate them, I love to shit on them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and, both the no, same no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> but what, what I was going to say was before I started going off on the other tangent, was, as much as I hate on them and I love to shit on them, they are so business savvy with all the shit they do. Sure. I mean, and you have to appreciate oh, 100%. that. 100%. Yes. I, they, I mean, they've built a multi-billion dollar machine with their whole entire family. So you know what I don't understand? I was thinking of this today. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> Perfect. <And, laughs> we're going to jump right into Dude, this. Dude, let's get it. <laughs> and this might be a little controversial. It oh, might not be. Beautiful. I love it. Hot I takes are fun. I, I was watching, I was watching some porn today. Okay. And I remember thinking, I remember. It was so long <laughs> I, ago. I would, I would hope so. <laughs> Most people watching porn get like in the zone. Yeah. yeah I yeah. was just like, I, I was watching it and I remember thinking like, how is this okay? Like, how is this legal? Okay. Uh So then I started fast forward. I started getting lost in my own head. It turns out I just turned it off, Uh, but I was like, uh, (laughs) how weird is it? This is legal, completely legal, right? They're having sex. They Mm -hmm. agree. They literally write up a contract. They get paid money, Mm -hmm. but like prostitution is not. And isn't that kind of weird? And the reason why I was thinking of this in the same day is because I also watched cops today. Like Ah, on my phone, my phone suggests Mm -hmm. it. And I was watching an episode of cops and they were busting these, they would have uh, undercover girls bust the Johns. Yep. And then they would have the John bust the undercover girls. And so interesting. And I, I thought it was weird when there was the guy busting the girl. And I thought how weird or either way, I guess, but how weird is it that like they never actually did anything. So wait, was going, the, was the undercover was, was the guy that they had that they had busted an undercover John then for Jane's or was well, it? Well, they did both. Oh, they, okay. the first part of the show, they were just like the guy was the, the undercover person trying to get the girl and they would bust the prostitutes. And then they did it the other way around where the girl was like, yeah, meet me behind the shed. And there was like cops there waiting. Yeah. But I thought, how weird is it that like, it's not okay. It's the same thing. They're both agreeing to sex. One of them. And I'm not pro prostitution or even porn. I'm just saying how weird is it that one of them is okay. And you can make a lot of money doing but the other one. Like what's the difference? The paperwork. I mean, (laughs) yes, in a certain way, but I, I would imagine that, uh, because there are actual companies and, and like ways to regulate and tax and everything on, on por- pornography, I would imagine that would be the reason why they would be okay with it because they, it's a form of income that can be taxed as opposed to prostitution. So you're saying that the government, if they could tax prostitution, would do it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, why wouldn't they do it? I guess there's be- not a lot of regulation. Be- there. Yeah, yeah, but I, at that point, um, what it seems like, or at least what the media has always portrayed, because I, I still don't really know a whole lot about hookers and whatnot. <laughs> still, I've been yeah. trying. I no, just don't know enough. No, I just never had the opportunity, I but I don't think I really I would be about I just, it. I don't get it. I have talked to a few hookers. They're cool people, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I could actually like go through with it. Anyways, besides the point, <laughs> um, I feel like, I feel like uh, most of the time they, they're doing it not out of their own free will. Uh-huh. You know, they're in a bad spot and they have a pimp or whatever the situation might be. And, and those guys aren't getting taxed. You know what I mean? Like, and, and they view, I mean, I'm sure it's not, all the time the way they view it or whatever and i'm not sure i'm sure most of them have their own ethics or whatever they might if they don't you know i still don't know but those guys view i would imagine they view the prostitutes as their property because they got them out of whatever bad situation they were in and you know that's are probably you why like they're the working you know what i mean like, for it or you- no i'm saying like Oh, you're the talking pimps about the pimps. Are, yeah, yeah. The pimps that are like, hey, I got you out of this. I'm going to dress but you they, up, get you out there. But they also never go after the pimps either. Yeah. Like they, they, I mean, maybe they do. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it's more undercover and, and deep than that because I feel like to be a noteworthy pimp that's making a lot of money, that's getting 
a sting operation isn't going to be publicized. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I just think it's so weird that it's like, I'd say get rid of both or let them both be. I, I don't see the issue with that. How I mean, many police officers do you think watch porn? Oh, fucking all of them. All, every single one, I mean, probably. Most people watch if, porn. Yeah, I was going to say, most people watch porn. Just Die like, girl. I just mean, like weed. Everyone had a big issue with weed, yep. and then weed became legal. It yep. turns out judges smoke weed, lawyers smoke weed, Dude, cops smoke weed. Yeah, like everyone smokes, everyone weed, smokes weed. Which they didn't just start when it became legal. It's Everybody's just, done it. It's just My point when I mention that is like the, the these police officers that are busting these people doing it, mm-hmm. it's just so weird that they're also contributing to the same thing, just legalized prostitution yeah. pretty much. I mean, yeah, I, I can't argue that. I, I feel like that's... It, it it's kind of I mean you already brought up is like weed. It's bad with the stigma that the media portrays it as until it's legalized for whatever reason and then it's totally normal. Yeah. It, yeah. So there's like you you're right. Like I remember growing up and weed was the devil. Oh one hundred. And now it's like everyone just kinda gets it more. Yeah. Oh one hundred percent. I mean well I mean and the only thing that changed is it's legal. Yeah, well the I, the the weirdest part about the whole entire thing was the war on weed and drugs really, but mainly weed was, was started back whenever, you know, there was still the whole segregation and all the other racism stuff that was brought up. And like weed is nothing. Well, not all the time, but the majority of the time it has healing benefits and all the other stuff. Yes. You can still get high out of your mind on it, obviously, sure. but there is benefits to doing it. But because it was stigmatized as bad by the government, everybody and their mom thought it was evil. If you look at, I mean, I'm sure there's statistics out there and I've seen enough videos and stuff that prove me right. You know, on the, if you flip on the news, drunk driver kills four people, drunk driver does this, drunk driver does that. Alcohol is far worse to humanity and the repercussions that follow being drunk are generally far, far worse than anything that will happen on a week. Both socially, both hurting other people yep. and hurting yourself is way worse with alcohol. 100%. And, and it's a depressant. People are like, oh yeah, I'm feeling down, so I'm going to go get hammered. They don't understand that that's just putting a fucking times 10 multiplier on that shit and saying, oh man, you had fun last night, but you're going to be depressed for a week now because you just They say that it's a temporary, because you know? it's part of my job. Sure. Like when, when we, I did a few trainings on that, and it is. So most people get confused about it. It actually is a temporary boost. You do feel better when oh, you drink. Oh, sure. It's For just, that short period of time. Yes, it's very, very short. Mm-hmm. And the ramifications of the aftermath of it is way worse, right? Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it's the same thing with like, you know, ecstasy and molly and stuff like that. It, it boosts the serotonin and shit in your brain that gets you to that euphoric spot for however many hours. But then the, the repercussions, the days later, I mean... You're borderline suicidal half the time. When you I do think that it's kind a genetic stuff, you know thing I mean? too, because oh, I've rolled 100%. before. Yeah, and I and I know a bunch of people that had terrible. They call it the rollover yeah. for people that don't know. Mm-hmm. And I never did. I always felt great after. Yeah, I've always felt great after my experiences as well. The um, issue, I think, I don't know, mm-hmm. is that you're probably not getting what you paid for. Yeah. So countries like uh, the, the Netherlands, uh, where in Amsterdam, where you can literally go to an MDMA bar. Yeah. And you can just sign in, and they oh, have a. You can literally do most... a counseling session. Yeah. On MDMA. Oh, and that they, sounds like badass. And they take you, you home. They do it okay. with psilocybin now too. Oh wow. And so you can go over there and do these therapy sessions and go home, and they say it's amazing for uh, veterans with PTSD. Oh, yeah, mental health. Absolutely. Yes. And like you're able, you're more vulnerable to. Uh, to talking about traumatic stuff, which helps you heal. Sure. And over there it is regulated. So you're for sure getting MDMA. Yeah. The issue the here oh, is yeah. you're not getting yeah, what you think with you're whatever. getting. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. And so there's, and I know we're getting like way to jump into the podcast. We're getting deep into yeah. drugs here. Oh yeah. Everything. But, and All I know <laughs> we started off about the prostitution part, yeah. but the drugs do tie into it 100%. because I was thinking today the same thing again, <laughs> cops. Yep. Because once you watch one, it's like you might want to watch a thousand more. Yeah, you rabbit hole the shit out of that. Yeah, no. And uh, so I was watching. It might have been the same one or the next episode that popped up Mm -hmm. where, um, same thing. They were busting these users, Mm -hmm. and I remember thinking, what a weird concept. Like they're already jacked up. Most like they're already like out of their minds. They're already like going through bad times, Mm -hmm. and now they're gonna get a felony and they're gonna go to jail. They never bargain with them. There's mm-hmm. never a cop that goes, Hey, where'd you get it? I'm yeah. going to go bust that guy yeah. because the sellers I get like, yeah. we got to get oh, rid of them. You know what I mean? They're the ones supplying these. It's so weird that someone's, people. yes, someone's literally killing themselves and then you're going to make it worse by throwing them in jail and, and all the repercussions that follow. Yeah. And I get that. And I know some friends that will listen to this that are police officers that will probably have a better explanation and by sure. all means, like, come on, tell me, leave it in the comments. But yeah. I just never got it. I never understood why well, you would throw someone in jail so, for that. So the whole thing that I, 
I view as it is, uh, it's it's the government, but it's not the police. People demonize the police for sure, continuously keeping true. that cycle yeah. going, but that's their job. That's what they're told to do. Sure, and and that's how they're told to approach it. The government, the people that are making the drugs and doing all that stuff, that whether it's you know all the pharmaceuticals or whatever else they can find, right? What if they can't afford the pharmaceuticals, the, the expensive stuff, coke and all that other shit? They get money from incarcerations. Yep. They get money from, you know, making the drug and then it getting sold to other people. They they keep that cycle going to keep the people that are down down. They there's not if they're if they cared about the public, they would create more rehab facilities, more more, you know, homeless facilities even. You yeah. know, just to help them get their get on their feet and get away from addiction. But they're making money. Why would they stop? Money really does make the world go round. Yeah. And when you see all the money and stuff politically, you can dive into a million different things. And mm-hmm. it all usually almost always leads back to someone's profiting off of it. One hundred percent. Absolutely. They, so they protect it. Yeah. So when I but when I say that it's when I say it's government, it's the politicians, it's the the higher ups, it's not the cops. People Good people point. give I'm cops the bad reps. I yeah. mean, they they they're they signed up to do a job. They were trained to do a job. The training half the time is hasn't been updated since like the eighties, which you know, I mean, I, okay, let me let me maybe it is now. After yeah, everything yeah, exactly. Happened. Yeah, with all the the oh the police brutality, police brutality and all the the very recorded stuff. Now that we have phones and everything, it's changed everything because we can see that shit happening and we can say, hey, public, this is bad. Yeah, and there's it's forcing reforms. So sure, but prior to, I mean. You're taught a job. You're going to do it because that's what you were taught. Sure. You know, so I, I, I hate when people bag on the cops for being dirty or bad or any of that shit, because not all of them are, are that way. But also at the same time, whenever you're told from the very hiring date to, you know, 25 years down the road to do something a certain way and you've never had an issue, why are you going to stop? Very true. You know, uh, but again, you know, yes, they're bad cops. Yes, they're great cops. It's the higher ups. It's people need to stop blaming the specific police officer unless it's, you know, the, the Chauvin's or whatever of your life where they're killing people. Sure. You know? what, what do you think we could do? And I know this, there's no right answer to this. Sure. But if you were just getting creative, what could we possibly do to incentivize someone? Let's go with drugs for a second. Sure. And let's go with real <laughs> drugs. When I say drugs, I'm not talking about weed. You're talking about Coke, meth. I'm talking about the stuff heroin, that literally like has no fentanyl. purpose at all. Yeah. Like uh, DMT, there's medicinal purposes sure. for that. Like Absolutely. mushrooms, there's medicinal 100%. with psilocybin. Mm-hmm. Even MDMA, weed yep. for sure. Yep. But I'm talking like the meth, the meth, the heroin, uh, whatever, uh, the, even the synthetic stuff. Oh, yeah, wanting the spice and all that other crazy shit. How do you even incentivize someone to stop doing that without arresting them? I mean, more often than not, if you're getting arrested, it's because you did something while on it. That's not, not always true, though. I mean, you're I, right. I, I, driving I said more often than not. Yes, but, sure. sure. So I, I, I get it. You're right. You're yeah. right about more often than not. But I've seen a lot where it's like sometimes the passenger, sometimes it's someone walking down the road. Yeah. Oh, that's you know right. Yeah, yeah. And so and it's they like, can tell something's off, so they go and talk to them. I think the if they are caught on drugs and it's not a actual crime, I think they should be sent to a rehab facility as opposed to jail first. Is it a crime to be on drugs, or is it a crime just to have drugs on you? Like if someone knocked on my house and they're yeah. like, uh, neighbor said you guys are being loud and I did a bunch of meth mm-hmm. and they're like, Hey, I noticed your eyes are weird right now. And I'm like, yeah, I did a bunch of meth. Can they arrest me? Uh, I believe, well, I mean from, and there's my, no meth yeah, in my yeah, house, no paraphernalia. Saying, like there's literally nothing. I'm just like, yeah, I did some meth. And I mean, from, think from what I, from what I, the very little that I know about law and everything, uh, you're not supposed to be able to self incriminate yourself. Um, mm-hmm. If you, if you haven't been read the Miranda rights, right? So like if they come to your door, they don't have a reason to arrest you. They haven't read you your Miranda rights and you say, yeah, I did some meth. That's not under law or oath or anything. Like they didn't read the, the rights to you. So mm-hmm. that doesn't count. Or at least, I mean, I might be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But from what I understand, until they read you your Miranda rights, anything that you say before then shouldn't count. That being said, though, I don't know what the rules, I, I'm pretty sure meth. Um, heroin and, you know, crack cocaine are on the, the list of narcotics that are illegal. That is bad. So yes, potentially. But are they illegal to possess and sell? Clearly they are, but is it illegal to like have them in your system? 
Because I've seen some where they go, like, if I drug tested you right now, would you pass? They tell people that, like, on cops. Yeah. I got to stop watching cops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's totally okay. Um, but I always want, and they never do, but sure, I always sure. wonder, like, if they did and it was dirty, like, do you go to jail? I get, if maybe someone's on probation, I, I, I mean, get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, if there's, if there's a reason why you shouldn't be and it's written somewhere, then you probably shouldn't. Because if but, my job drug tests sure. me and I come out dirty, they mm-hmm. don't call the cops. They just fire me. Yeah. So there's got to be something well, there. Where that's because it's a, it's a written contract between you and your, yeah, exactly. Sure. Between your company. Um, but I feel like if it's, you know, meth or the, like the really bad shit, I feel like most companies would probably report you to the police because that that's really bad shit. It's not like weed where it was a slap on the wrist because it I don't know you if know they I mean? would like, though. I, I mean, never, I mean, maybe they do. Yeah, I've never I, heard of I'm anyone that's sure like, either. dude, I, I, my job found out I'm doing, well, then well, again, was gonna how say, many people was there were, where are you working at? Dude, Taco Bell drug <laughs> test to be mad. Taco Bell found out I was doing heroin. So they called the cops. <laughs> <laughs> the people listening are like, yeah, thank yeah, God yeah. these idiots figured that out. Yeah, right. we're thinking that yeah, shit right. the whole time. Of course. I guess you're right. Yeah. Like, I mean, I how bad know. would that be though? Like, Oh, what about if it was a politician and they got drug tested? Like, would that be an issue? Motherfucker. The drug test is uh, drug. Drug tests will never be given to a politician. That's true. Ever. I'm pretty sure. Ever. I'm pretty sure Trump was on like Adderall his whole time. And I think Biden's on some shit too. Oh, Biden's on some shit just to keep him alive. Yeah. He's, his head just falls. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's like a guy that just holds him up. <laughs> no, which I never was in. I mean, shit, man. Fucking. Yeah. No, Biden. Biden is his own whole entire dumb shit but like the the politicians are always going to set themselves up to where if they're in any way incriminated any type of way they are going to have some sort of dirt on whoever it is that's getting at them or some or they're just going to throw a fuck ton of money and it's going to disappear There's, yeah i mean think of how many politicians that have been in compromising positions that have never once been punished fully for it. Sure. I mean, way more, I mean, way tr- less have, like I can only yeah. think of like one or two that ever got like in like, yeah. Right. I mean, trouble. Carter and I mean, or not Carter. Uh, who was it? Why, why am I struggling on this one? Oh, I, I was thinking Carter? not even no. like presidents. I was thinking, remember the one dude that was like trying to get hand jobs in the airport bathroom. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if he went I, to I jail don't remember for his that, name. I, but he, he definitely he was like tapping. I'm his sure foot he, or something. Yeah, I'm sure he got like house arrest or some shit. But they get away with shit like that. That's man. very I mean, true. Yeah. I mean, okay. Best example with uh, again, there was never technically proof. I mean, Trump evaded taxes for fucking years. Yeah, and there there is actual proof probably somewhere, but there was never actual any proof according to the, anybody. Yeah, but like. If it's as publicized as it is for him and he can still get away with it and then get elected president, you just throw money at the shit and it goes away. That's true. And people forget when there's some newer, hotter topic. That yeah, comes out. Oh, 100%. I mean, the media is so far up and both sides. It's not just one or the other. The media on both sides is so far up each party's ass that the minute something starts going wrong for either party. Oh, hey, look, uh, mass shooting. Oh, hey, look you know, this sports team did this or like they, yeah. they publicize the shit out of things that should never matter. Dave, uh, Dave Chappelle had a funny joke about that oh, back sure. in the day. Do you remember when he did the, uh, the Michael Jackson <laughs> things aren't going well overseas, uh, Michael and, uh, the war in Iraq isn't, we didn't find any weapons. So yep. we're going to need you to jerk off another kid, Mike. Yep. That- <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah. Or like the, but that's funny. Like right when, uh, the, what was it? Or even like towards the end of COVID, like the war in Ukraine happened and that was every, like no one even talked about. Oh yeah. Like there was, they stopped doing the whole Fauci thing yeah. where he's like on TV oh, every yeah. day. Yeah. That, that poor man was getting crucified for telling the truth, what he thought was the truth early on. I don't even know anything about him. I just know people hate him. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Because at the very beginning he was like, look, this is a very serious thing. This is real. Whether or not you believe it is or not, there was enough nations across the world that there had to be at least a little bit of some some real reality to it, right? I think or at least he, I think so. When he lost his credibility was when he he lied and then admitted he lied about the mask. Yeah. When he was saying, I forgot what he said, but he pretty much said, everyone wear masks. Yeah. And then he came out and said, masks don't work. Yeah. And then he came out again and said, all right, we need to wear masks. I, I lied. And I said, masks don't work because I didn't want you guys to buy all the masks. Well, or something. He said yeah, something okay. like that. Well, I mean, yes, <laughs> yes, he lost credibility for that. And I mean, he shot himself in his own foot. That being said, though, how much of that was pressure from... You know, the, the pressure I can never understand. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, how many, how much of that is, Hey, you're the head doctor of, of who, or was it CDC or who? 
World Probably Health both. Organization. Well, he was like the biggest funder of, yeah. of uh, WHO, Okay, right? yeah, yeah. So, so if he wasn't yeah. involved with them, he was a funder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he was the head of either one of those. But you start getting pressure from the president of the United States saying, hey, you're not spinning this way. I want to spin it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, granted, again, this is all speculation, but I would feel like my job is threatened. I could lose my career. I would probably start saying shit that I shouldn't. That's why I would. You know what I mean? I would but be then a the fact that politician. He, oh, dude, me too. But that's bad. why I never will. I mean, yeah, I there's already too much dirt to dig up on me anyways. But <laughs> <laughs> but like, I don't know, man. I, I have a hard time lying whenever I know it's it goes against being real. But at the same time, whenever it comes for your, oh, your own self-preservation, you start, tr- you know, you start thinking about things that you might not do. Well, you're normally, also you know? incentivized like, to not say certain things. Yeah. And so it's like a it's a tough, especially like. It's one thing socially, like I can lose some friends, like sure. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. But when like your job's on the line, yeah, exactly. when you're, your, your family's reputation's yeah. on the line, yeah. it's like you start going like, all right, regardless of what I feel, I got to watch what I say about X, Y, yeah. and Z. Yeah. Like, that kind of sucks, yeah. but that happens. Well, yeah. And the, the thing, the, the thing that fu- like, okay, the thing that really fucking bugged me about the whole mask thing was the fact that people were fucking freaking out about it so bad. Like people don't understand that just breathing on somebody else is enough to give like if like say I have fucking strep or the flu or something. Sure, yeah. I breathe on you, I sneeze on you, fucking touch my mouth, I shake your hand. That potentially is going to get you sick regardless. Sure. Or you lend me your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and sure the the mask doesn't prevent it 100% or anything, but it curbs the amount of fluids going at you. It curbs the amount of, you know what I mean? Like people weren't thinking about it logically. And that was the thing that drove me nuts. Like, yeah, I I, gar- I know it's not guaranteed, but it's going to curb that shit from like 90% speaking free face to like, I don't know, I'm sure it wasn't even close to 50%, but somewhere around there, you know, what? It, it decreases the amount of potential to do that. I didn't like the idea. It was the whole mass thing was weird for me. Oh I, yeah. Cause it was forced. Well, and then at first I'm like, sure. Like you tell it, but yeah, as yeah. it went by, did you ever get COVID? Yeah, I got it. And yeah. I got vaccinated. I yes. got it after I got vaccinated. I got it before. Okay, so I got it after uh-huh. and I got it on my bachelor party. Oh, and I'm tough. pretty sure. Yeah, no, no. Well, I wasn't sick. I'm, I'm pretty oh, sure I okay. got it you that got weekend. It after. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, got it. And uh, I was probably the only one of the group that was vaccinated mm. and no one else got it but me. And I remember thinking, and I, that, I'm one story. It could have been sure, a big sure, coincidence, sure. right? Yep. So I'm not advocating vaccine pro, anti, whatever. I got it. I still got it. Wear mm. my mask. I got it. Yep. I don't wear my wa- mask. I don't get it. Like, yeah. it, it didn't matter. I sure. just remember thinking, how weird is it? And then to go back to the bachelor party, we're in Laughlin and uh, we're in the casino. <laughs> And you had oh, to wear shit. a mask mm-hmm. unless you were smoking, which is the most ridiculous <laughs> fucking thing. They're smoking all over Dude, this the casino. The rules and exceptions around the masks for anywhere was just like, I just thought it was so kidding. silly. Oh, yes. it is. Oh, 100%. The whole entire thing was silly. Like, yes, both, but from both sides, from the I'll die before I wear a mask to the you have to wear a mask to even like, well, they got be us six feet from me. And you're like, you know what they got me with? <laughs> I'll speak for myself. I okay, think a lot sure, of people. Sure. They got me with the whole narrative, like, do you, do you want to kill grandma? Like that whole thing. And I'm like, oh, that was the first time I'm like, you know what? I don't want to kill any old people. Yeah. And so anybody. like, just in case I wear it. Sure. But then it's like, like, I, I know a bunch of old people that got it and then we're fine. And then like, remember kids couldn't get it and then oh, kids did yeah, get it. Yeah. And like, it was just all over the place. Oh, dude, I'm like, I, what are we even doing but here? But the, the crazier part even still is I, I knew three or four older people that got it and died immediately. I knew. Really? Yeah. Yeah, See, yeah, I didn't know anyone that died. Yeah, I I knew uh like three people that died from it that were older, like 60 plus. Okay. And then I knew a couple people um whether it was acquaintance from family or personally knowing them that died in their like 30s to 50s. So I was like, shit, man, like this could even hit us, you know what I mean? But yeah. we were supposed to be the healthy demographic. And I knew a couple people our age that died. So it was really? like, yeah. I was like, fuck, dude, what do I even think about it? And for me, my my experience, I had everything i had the shits i had the body aches the yeah. shakes the the headache that lasted three days the the shortness of breathing was the scariest part i got that in the last two days of my two week fucking just annihilation of my body <laughs> the fucking dude I, I moved to colorado and i literally was there for a week and got it oh man and i hadn't even got my wi-fi set up in my house so i was, so I was like dying there? in bed on my fo- with my phone in my hand like trying to up the data yeah. plan for the verizon oh, bro <laughs> it was so brutal and and like i had no one to take care of me because I, I moved up not knowing anybody my my aunt and uncle were like a whole town away but that was like 30 oh, minutes man. plus 
they had it literally before me. They were the ones that we theorized that gave it to me. Yeah. Um, and like, I felt so bad. I was like, every since then, I was like, I don't ever want to give that to anybody old or young. Like, sure. So yeah. I, I did the mask thing, but also I hear enough stories. Yeah. I had some sneezes or whatever for a day and I was fine. I was like, I think, I think genetics matters and sure. underlying conditions matters. Sure. I wore it anytime he told me to wear it. Yep. Even I'm telling you now how annoying it was to be at a casino and watch oh, people do that. that shit. But I still wore it. Like, yeah. it, oh, it, sure. it was one of those things where I'm like, I, I don't care that much. Well, that just comes down to morals at that point, though. Yes. You care enough about other people. I also just don't think it's worth the argument. That, they kill, they killed a guy that weekend in Laughlin at a casino. What? They, 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 uh, we were that <laughs> day. It was my first time in Laughlin. Yeah. Holy and shit. Okay. Daryl's dad lives there. Mm-hmm. So he's familiar with all the other casinos. And I guess at the casino right next to ours, the day I got there, they uh, put the mandate in place at midnight. So when I got there, nobody oh, was yeah, running. Yeah, yeah. And then at midnight, the they walk around, put them on. Sure. And I guess, and this is just a story, is or it for sure happened, but yeah. we're hearing the story, is a guy at the casino next to us mm-hmm. decided he wasn't going to wear it. A different guy at the poker table said, you better wear it. Yeah. They said, we're not starting the game until you wear it. He said, I'm not wearing it. They got into a fist fight, and the guy killed him with his hands. Like He what? beat him down and killed him. And they let him do it? I don't, um, where's the security at that point? I don't know. I, yeah, so the so next day. Were they day, all afraid they were, he was going to cough on him? The next day. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I should, I should laugh at somebody dying. I'm not breaking him up. Yeah, He's right. not wearing a mask. Yeah, I don't want to die. I mean, fuck, I don't want to get coughed on, dude. Shit. It's so, moral of the story. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Not wearing your mask does kill you. Yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah, uh, bad joke? Shit. Too soon? All right. I don't know about too soon, but it was definitely a bad joke. It was. Uh, <laughs> and when we get to the casino the next yeah. day, when they told us, we're like, whoa. Yeah, it was one shit. of those things. I'm like, look, I don't care that much. Like, I don't want to wear it, but if you sure. tell me to wear it and it, yeah, I'm I mean, holding up a you. poker game, yeah. I'm going to wear it. I don't yeah, care that it. much. Sure. I will say the one thing that truly, truly fucking bothered me about the whole mask thing was them splitting fucking hairs on what kind of mask you had to wear. Yes. Like, I understand yeah. that, like, bacteria lasts longer in, in linen or whatever the fuck their excuse was. But if I'm wearing something to cover my face for a few hours and then I go home and I wash it or change it or do something else and then wear a different mask. You shouldn't say, oh, well, you're not allowed in here because you're wearing, you know, well, one of I those like super thin fabric. they don't know fabric. if you washed it. Well, I would and, be their and that's, argument. And that's yeah. fair. But at the same time, I know so many people that just reuse their fucking shitty little disposable ones that are supposed to be okay by, you know, the World Health Organization and all that other shit. Yeah. So it's like, well, are you really going to split hairs? If I'm wearing a mask, let me wear my mask and be chill. Like, sure. Yeah. Some you know, places, like, I, I remember the, uh, you got to wear it on the way to the table. But once mm. you get there, you can take it off because you're eating. So fucking dumb. Th- those are the moments yeah. where it was like, all right, like, what are we doing, guys? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yes. Oh, I'm, but also at this point in time, like, this is all strictly a, well, fuck, this is something we've never experienced before, so we're gonna make up the rules as we go. And people didn't understand that either. They're like, oh well, these guys are the head doctors that should know how to do this shit because they're the epidemiologists and all this shit. And it's like, there has always been some sort of disease that comes through throughout all of history that no sure, one knows yeah. how to handle. You know, so it's. Yeah, the there fly. there was fanatics on both sides. Yeah, oh, there 100%. was the I'm gonna kill you if you don't put your mask yeah. on. Oh, and uh, then there's, there's a lot of that shit, which is ironic, right? Yeah. And then there was like a, I'm never wearing my mask, and yeah. you should all take them off or I'll rip them off your faces. Yeah, and it's like it's, I'm I live somewhere in the middle. Well, it it just goes back to the whole polarizing thing with politics and everything. Is everybody is so fuck your point, I'm right, and if you're not about it, fuck you. And there's no middle ground anymore. There's no like. Let me talk to you about it. Let me see why you think. And we can still be cool afterwards. Yes. We've there, totally lost that as a society. Which I like that we're doing this now. Yeah. This is exactly what you're saying. And I'm glad that you brought that up. I mm-hmm. have a friend. Yep. And I won't say his name, but he'll probably know who he is. He <laughs> is so pro Black Lives Matter. Okay, sure, sure. Which, I, like, whatever you think of the movement, that's fine. Yeah. But he would post, this is the only, my only gripe with him, mm-hmm. is he would literally post things like, and this isn't word for word, but I'll give you a pretty sure. close example. He would say something like, white people, you're all racist, you need to accept that, and if you don't accept that, then delete me off Facebook, we are not friends, I, was, I don't care what you say. And I remember thinking, like, Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. why not have the conversation? Yeah. Let's say you're right. Yeah. Let's say like all white people are racist. Sure. Why would you say that? Wouldn't you instead go, "Hey, like I think white people need to understand sy- systemic racism." Sure. And, and if you don't agree educated. with me, mm-hmm. reach out to me because I would love to have a conversation with you about it so Absolutely. I can educate you. Yeah. If like to me, I'm and, like, isn't that if your tr- if your goal is to inflict change, yeah. 
why wouldn't you be open to having the conversation? Why would you immediately cut out everyone who disagrees with you so you can live in an echo chamber where people agree with you? You're literally doing nothing. Yeah. You're just surrounding yourself by people that already think yeah. like you. You should instead invite the other and take it not Black Lives Matter, take anything else. Oh, absolutely. I if mean, I believe strongly that prostitution should be legal. I need to talk to the people that think it should be illegal. That's mm, my best that course. You can build that's that the shit. change I want to make. I wouldn't just be like, you disagree, you get out. You yeah. agree, come hang out. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I do nothing. Uh, yeah, it, it does nothing, but I'll play a little bit of devil's advocate for, for your friend. Whenever you are constantly being told you're wrong and you're constantly facing that discrimination and everything else, it's easy to point that blame and to feel like, well, unless I say something so polarizing, no one's going to listen. No one's going to do this. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it's okay no, by no, any no, means, I get but you. it know. wasn't polarizing though. Yeah. That, that post that he posted, sure. he posted a lot of them. Uh -huh. I had like a hundred likes yeah. by people who agree with him. Yeah. He changed nothing yeah. except for everyone who disagreed with him. Didn't, yeah, they didn't speak out. up. Yeah. Like they didn't say anything. So they he, just he ignored didn't it. accomplish anything. Yeah. He has the same friends. Yeah, no needs, one deleted it. It needs to be, it, there needs to be conversation about those things to, to progress. Yes. I, but I, I actually, it's funny that you mentioned that. I was literally having this conversation with one of my coworkers uh, because we, we are, I mean, I'm half white. I look full white. She's full white. And, but we support, I mean, we, we, we are surrounded by a melting pot of people. We support all, all that good stuff. But she was like, yeah, I was a fan of Whoopi Goldberg. And then the minute she started coming out on the view and saying, well, all white people do this, all white people do that. And she's like, how can she lump me in when she doesn't understand what I've been through? I've been, I get that people don't agree with the idea of white people facing racism. And to a certain extent, because, you know, Caucasian people had been in power for so many years on earth, that it's hard to say that they have. But whenever you grow up in a predominantly Hispanic place and you like sh she went to Gadsden. Yeah. And literally it's like 10 percent white, 5 percent black, and the rest is straight up Hispanic and Mexican. Yeah. You get you get bullied for being different. Sure. In a place like that. Yeah. Not not all of New Mexico is like that, obviously. And, you know, same for the other heavily his, Hispanic population or any any minority, really. But you, you being white in an area like that, you're going to catch some flack. I got bullied when I was young because of it. And, you know, it is what it is. I was proud of my Hispanic side. And no one believed me. And I got bullied for being white, like whatever. Yeah. But to lump every white person in like that is, is total bullshit. You yeah. know, it's, it's ridiculous. It just doesn't accomplish anything. It, and 100%. It, it's, it's uh and people that aren't from New Mexico probably don't understand. Yeah. That. No, yeah for you're sure. absolutely right. There's yeah. the Midwest there. there no one. Yeah. There's something special about, I'll speak about Las Cruces specifically sure. because we're at probably all of New Mexico where it is kind of that way. Yeah. And I, yeah, I grew up getting made fun of and, and I grew up making fun of some other people. Sure. But there is a weird thing here where it's like, if you're a shitty person, you're kind of a shitty person. Yeah. And if you're a good person, you're good. If you're in the middle, you're in the middle. Yeah. And like it, I, the only kind of racial stuff I see here is jokes, which yeah. it seems like time. you can do a lot of jokes here that people don't care about. Cause it's kind of like people get it a oh, little yeah. bit more here. Well, yeah. There, everybody, there's such a melting pot. I mean, excuse me. The, the, uh, you know, the African, African American community here is probably the smallest minority, but, between the Hispanic and white people, you can you can make jokes all you want most of the time, so long as they know that you're a good person. And, and, and if it's there's funny. not gonna be an issue. I mean, <laughs> well, I would hope if you're gonna make a joke, it'd be fucking funny. I mean, if someone makes fun of me for being white and it's hilarious, I will laugh with them. Yeah, and absolutely. I've gotten so many jokes that are hilarious. Oh, sure. And, and that maybe that's the comedic side of me, but I think you should be able to make fun of anything. I agree and completely. As long as it's agreed that it's a joke, and, and yeah, if you if you mean it and it's obvious you mean it. I'm going to call you out on it. I'll be the first. I'll be like, dude, that was fucked up. Intent like, what are you doing? matters. And I think. And tone matters. Yes. And I think, but I think, well, tone's part of understanding what the intent was, right? I think it's, at least for me, I can almost always pick out if someone's being serious. Or yeah. Not. And, and usually the most racist people are kind of hidden. Oh like, yeah. They're not that, at least in New Mexico, we're speaking about New Mexico. Oh yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. straight up. Like sometimes I'll catch on to some stuff and I'm like, oh my God, like you. Yeah, like, you said you said a phrase that was only said back in the sixties. And what? the way you said it, and yep. like you slipped it in there, like yep. I can tell that you don't see things the way I see them. But it's like if it's funny, like I yeah. I think it's hilarious. Like oh, yeah. I'm I'm all about it. I think we should be able to make fun of each other because it's what better way to own something? Yeah, I make fun of. Oh, I make fun of white people all the time. I do it too. <laughs> I make fun of foster kids, and I was one. Yep. I 
everything that hurt me in my life, yeah. I find a way to, to make a joke oh, about I it. I talk shit about nerds all the time. I'm covered. <laughs> I mean, I have a Lord of the Rings tattoo, a Spider-Man, a Star Wars. Like, there you go. My whole right side of my body is going to be dedicated to nerd shit. There you go. Like, I'm going to get a tattoo on my thigh with Thor and Raiden throwing oh, lightning at each other. Ass. Yeah, dude, I'm so hyped. <laughs> so hyped. Yeah, dude. Oh, I'm so fucking hyped. But, you know, I, I make fun of nerds. I make fun of fucking white people, jocks. With the right crowd, I can make Hispanic jokes because I am... But also, I do understand that I can't just willy nilly say that out in public because I look white, man. I, I mean, if I say it out in, out in public and there's enough Hispanic people around that don't know me and don't know my background, yeah, they'll be like, "What the fuck did you say, white boy?" And I'm like, "My bad, bro." Like, you know, yeah, what I mean. But I also I censor myself for it for yeah, that reason, you know. Yeah, which is understandable. Yeah, you. Yeah, have, I thought my you're a basketball fan at all? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I follow a little bit of basketball. I was a huge Mike Bibby fan like okay. my whole life. Yeah, yeah. And growing up, I was like, and I talked about this on one of the podcasts. I'm like, man, in this league full of mostly black people, there's yep. this little white dude just balling. Yeah. And it turns out he's not even white. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so that's like, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Like, I was just like, as a kid, I'm like, oh my God, like I can be that six one white dude balling sure, up. Sure, yeah. And, and I, I, again, we're joking about it. Yeah. But yeah, he's like half black and half white. Yep. But he's white, so he's white. Yeah. Like, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, Dude, you and I'm can, not saying you that's be... true. I'm saying that's how he would get perceived. Oh, 100%. I yeah. mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a halfer. I'm a quarter uh, Spanish and a quarter Mexican on my mom's side, and I'm all white from my dad's side. But yeah. I clearly got all white jeans, goddamn you, dad. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, I, I've never once been perceived as Hispanic. And, I, I mean, I don't blame anybody for that. Sure. Obviously. But I'm proud of my roots, man. I'm a Luhan through and through. And then, of course, on my mom's side, like, I'll throw hands for it, but, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I'm past the point of trying to defend myself for it either though. You know, was that a hard thing growing up in this city, knowing that you have this Hispanic side of you that like, no, first of all, no one's going to see it. Yeah. Oh, and if you, no bring, if you bring it up, that causes a bunch more problems. Like there's oh, no dude, way that ends well. My whole adolescence. I mean, my mom always told us, be proud of our Hispanic side. And we are, I mean, we we do everything that most Hispanic families do. I mean, shit, we, for my first like six years, anytime we went and visit my grandparents, uh, my mom's parents, they're Catholic. So we went to Catholic church. I hated it because it was just so boring all the time. And I realized that's a predominantly Hispanic and Mexican thing. Yeah. Cool. That's part of my heritage. Do not support like it, it whatsoever. No, <laughs> it's so boring, man. But I, I respect it. I respect the institution and all that stuff. I, as a historian, might not love it. But, um, you know, it, it, it did cause a lot of issues. I, I got beat up a lot growing up. Um, but, but you, you, I mean, you feel wrong for not owning it too. And being part of that, you know what I mean? Like, well, I don't know. It, it was just one of those weird things that I, I'm going to rep it until the day I die. And if you believe me or not, that's your own issue. Sure. But I, since that point, like after that, we had my little brother, my parents had my little brother. And that gave me a little bit more credibility because I'm like, look at my family. So they like, look at Zuma and my mom. They're like, okay, she's, she's a little bit of Weta, but she, you can see some features. And then you see my little brother and they're like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. You're a halfer. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, motherfucker, I've been telling you this whole time. I'm like, <laughs> God damn. They're like, oh, well, I should have known when you put green chili on everything. I was like, yeah, but I can understand why you wouldn't. Cause that's a New Mexico thing. But serve me up some of that shit right now. Well, also people lie. Yeah. Like, I, I oh, met some true. people that like pretended they oh, were. Oh, fuck yeah. I remember some people that pretended they were cousins in middle school just because they thought oh, it was yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. And so uh, like, that, I mean, doesn't, that doesn't leave the, it makes it really hard for the people that actually are that yeah. don't know how to explain oh, dude, it. dude, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> oh, for sure. Did your mom ever get super protective about that? Was there oh, ever a moment? Oh, where, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, my dad, my dad being my dad, I mean, you know, and for anybody that doesn't, my dad is a complete and utter jokester. He says the most, ridiculous shit at the <laughs> most inappropriate time i mean i'll preface with a quick kind of story yeah oh yeah i'll preface with a quick quick story to give you an idea of what kind of jokester my dad is uh we were at disneyland when i was 12 right okay. um around disneyland there. is florida or california uh i always california mix them. Okay. oh so so I, i'm actually wrong i was 12 but we were in we were in florida we we're at disney world so world gotcha. yes 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 we we're at disney world we we're on this tram uh going to a part of the park and we stopped for people and my dad's sitting across from me. I'm sitting next to my grandma and this lady gets in. She has, she is a very large woman, a very large woman has a gigantic butt. <laughs> and, and my dad literally sees her walk by and her butt goes past my face. And he looks me square in the eyes and he goes, baby got back. <laughs> and I'm like, did she hear? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> she looked at him and he's like, 
You're doing well. I was like, <laughs> no, no, what? No, I was embarrassed as shit. I was so red, obviously, with the whiteness again, fucking everywhere. It, it was it was tough. So he makes jokes like that that you're just like, my mom's constantly like, filter, filter, watch filter. It, yeah, watch yeah. it. Yeah. Where's your, for when we get home. Scott, Scott, <laughs> Scott, where's your where's your filter, Scott? So you know it's one of those. But uh, I mean, shit, man. Like he would always be like, oh yeah, well you beans and stuff. You know, like joking around totally. Mm-hmm. But my mom like, Scott, how dare you say that? And, and he doesn't mean it by any means. I mean, the guy grew up around a, one of his best friends was Hispanic. Growing up, like he doesn't mean anything by it. Um. But he'll joke around like that. And that's the only time she really got defensive because I didn't really tell a whole lot of people I got beat up growing up early Mm -hmm. on in life because I didn't want people to, you know, freak out or anything like that. You know, like, uh, but as I got older and I started realizing, like, hey, that's not normal for people, (laughs) you know, to get beat up for for being proud of who they are and shit. Like, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's that's different. Yeah. Um, But yeah, she she definitely. It's like, you guys don't forget where we come from. Like we, she traced our family back all the way to Spain. Like yeah, from, from my, my grandpa's name. Um, my gram my grandma's name is actually a coast other from, uh, El Paso and originally from Mexico. Her great grandpa actually got killed by Pancho Villa, which was cool. I mean, <laughs> historically speaking, not, not for your grandpa, yeah, no, not but. for my, not for my great, great grandpa, <laughs> but historically speaking, that's like a, a cool bit of history. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's like, just don't forget who you are. And I, I never will. But it, it's also hard to, you know, want to truly embrace it and be part of that whole thing when you're constantly told you're not. That's true. That, that's got to be hard. Because I, I, the reason why I ask and the reason why uh-huh, I think about sure. it is because my wife's Hispanic. Yeah, and yeah. so literally that will be my kids. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, I'm like sure. full blown white. Oh, like, yeah. I'm about as white as you Brother, get. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> but do you? I'm almost invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, this is just because I've had I have a little Hispanic. I got it. I, this is this is you a, got some tan in th- you. This right? is twenty nine years of wearing short sleeve shirts. That's there the only. That's why. I mean, you see my chest. I'm just yeah. as white, brother. <laughs> I was super white, and I. Yeah, yeah. You know what's weird, or more ironic is is my biological family. I, mm-hmm. I my dad was out of the picture when I was young, okay. and my mom is. Uh, you know, she's a super white lady, yep. but she's like. She's everyone in my family, I think, is more tanner than me. I don't know what happened. Um, and then, um, yeah, but I didn't, I grew up with just my mom and whoever she was dating at the time. And we lived in Louisiana. So she, a lot of the guys she dated were like Cajun guys who okay. were French and they were like super tan. You ever met a Cajun guy? He's almost like brown red, like red brown. Oh, they're, okay, they're just, yeah. Everything's I mean, outdoors. I've met guys like that here. Think of and, like Jean Claude like, Van Damme. Oh, God. <laughs> But don't get too horny on me. Baby girl, you can't tell me Jean Claude's name and, and not expect skin. me to get a His little like, no, hmm, no, uh, let me unbutton real quick. <laughs> it's like, so she, like, that's the kind of guy she would date. And so, um, God, I forgot where I was going to the story. Anyway, oh yeah. So I like, I didn't get, and then we grew up in Louisiana, like, and then mm. El Paso at, I think I was in El Paso by sure. nine, uh-huh. which is predominantly Hispanic. Yep. And then here by 12 and I've been yep. here ever since. Sure, sure. And so I grew up not around white people a lot. Yeah. And so, like, it was like a weird thing Culture for me. Culture shock, huh? Yeah. Well, it was just like I again, and I'm not comparing my story to yours because oh, no, I'm no, sure. about as white as it gets. But hmm. I remember not fitting in with my foster homes and wanting to, and sure, and, and just kind of being mixed in the cultures. And then hmm. so to where like, and I had an accent a little bit from Louisiana, which has gone away. It comes out a little bit when I drink, but I'll slur my words as a bit of a southern thing. Sure, in there, yeah. Which people in Las Cruces will almost interpret as like a black thing. And, Interesting. and in Louisiana, our neighborhood was major. There was a, a French community of Cajun guys mm-hmm. that lived like a little bit away, but our like trailer park was predominantly black mm-hmm. and a little bit of white people. And sure. then there was like some Asians that lived sure, like sure. A, a block over. Interesting. That's and so a, okay. like my whole life, I've been heavily influenced by pretty much every culture except white people. Yeah. That's, and so, that's crazy. It was always weird. And then yeah. I ended up getting adopted by Daryl and Yvonne, who was like <laughs> the whitest people. Yes. You could possibly and so find. it's like. <laughs> It's yeah. so, but now when I'm older and I talk to people, they always say they, the first thing they ask me is like, where are you from? Yeah. Not because they really want to know. I mean, they do want to know, I'm sure. sure. But they go like, man, you don't talk how some of the guys I know yeah. talk. You don't, you, got, seen, you don't got a Southwestern draw. You got a, yes. a Southern Southern draw. And I, I'm uh-huh. all mixed up. And sure. so to me, I genuinely notice like how I say that with a draw myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that, it's that artesia blood. Get it. yeah. That, that Eastern New Mexico, almost West Texas blood. <laughs> Dude, trust me, that many county boys. Ooh, Eddie yeah. County is a yeah. Our Daryl and my dad both they're they're from the Eddie that County. Area. Yeah, yeah, it's we don't really need to talk about it. 
I heard your dad talk a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure you... <laughs> I'm assuming you guys don't have a lot of friends back there. Ah, uh, you know, not really. No. Uh, just my... The, the immediate family that lives over there. Oh, gotcha. Um, well, yeah, yeah, no, really. Not not a big... I don't know, man. They, they have... A lot of them out there have such a tight community because a lot of them are, you know, the oil towns and stuff like that. So, yeah. being an outsider... Pff, Dude, working in the oil field is like one of my dreams for a while. I know that sounds bad. That, okay. I, I it, really, I moved out to Midland at one point yeah. specifically for that. I never did it. I yeah. wouldn't say that sounds bad because, I mean, those motherfuckers make a shit ton of money. It, which is exactly, but there's a lot of drug use. Oh, These sure. guys are working 16 well, yeah. hour shifts. Exactly. Like seven days in a row oh, yeah. and then getting and a week of, off yeah, and most to of it blow all the money they made. Exactly. <laughs> most, and, and most of it, well, not most of it. I shouldn't say most of it because I'm not 100% sure, but a lot of my friends that had done all that stuff that I, cause I have quite a few that did go do the oil field shit for a long time. A lot of their drug issues started because they got injured on the job and kept medicating That's, cause they didn't want to lose money. Yes. And then it's cheaper yeah. to get even now, like uh fentanyl is a big one. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. At first fentanyl was an accidental thing that people would get yep. in their meth or heroin. I think it was mostly Coke. heroin, right? Coke too. Is it Coke too? Yeah. Yeah, and so they're overdosing on it. Yep. And now, and it, they say it's like ten times stronger than, or a hundred times stronger than like morphine. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like now it's a thing that people want. Yeah. Like people are literally are actually asking buying for, for it, which is insane. To me. Which is crazy, right? There's because they're they were saying like anything more than what I think I heard like a dime or some shit. I, again, fact check me if I'm wrong. <laughs> tell me, yeah. but like something as small as like a fucking dime head, and will like kill you. Yeah, yeah. Why would you ever want something that fucking wild? You know what I mean? Like, I get if you're in pain, but. I think people that do stuff long <laughs> enough just want the next best. Thing. Well, yeah, sure. They, they're chasing the high. Yeah, it. they're chasing the dragon in South Park words. <laughs> <laughs> Puff magic dragon. <laughs> it's, so one of the things I saw, do you eat seafood? Yeah. Are you a seafood fan? 100%. I am not. Do you eat Subway? Really? You're, wait, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> I swear, I swear <laughs> they're tied in. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, I, I'm. Did you hear about have the subway s- every once in a while? Okay, because mm-hmm. they they had like a uh, a scandal with their tuna. Do you see that? No, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, it was not front page news. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's but fair. there was like a scandal that came out. I was reading it the other day because I always like to keep up to date with the weird shit. Yeah, and it yeah, was in California, sure. and I was reading it. Ugh. And uh, I love Subway. I just don't eat seafood. Sure, that's the reason why I asked. Okay, time um, out. Well, real quick. Sure. Uh, before we continue. What about seafood messes with you? Because clearly you, you, you're not a fan. And I'm from Louisiana, yeah, which, is, which like is one of the seafood capitals in the U.S. Yeah, sure. I think that's why. I've never figured it out. Okay. I even, tr- I legitimately hate it. Like sure. some people say it and they just have it. Yeah. Everyone's like, Dude, if you season it right, it's good. I've had, I've, I've is had it, just it a the bunch. consistency or texture or what? Like, I'll give you my theory. Okay. And I know it's good for you and I work out a lot and sure, the sure. rock eats like an yeah. like crazy Shrimp amount and, of cod and salmon is like and one of his big shit. things. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, I'm going to, I even forced my, I marinated it. I just can't do it. Interesting. I think it's nostalgic. I had such a bad childhood uh, in Louisiana. Okay, fair. I think the smell of the seafood, like, so like all it, seafood, no matter what. Yeah. Even like my wife likes uh, tuna. If she dude, even salmon opened. Is so good. I had a roommate that made lobster one day. Oh, well, made, lobster's was gross. Work. Fuck, fuck the lobster. The whole house smelled like seafood. I literally stayed at a friend's house for a week until the smell went away. I don't blame you. But I, I will say something controversial. Lobster is trash. All of it? Yes. Why does it cost like a million dollars for one? Because at, at one point in early American history, I actually saw a video on it. I'm not, again, fact check it. I might be wrong to a certain extent. But I saw a video on it where... People used to call lobster the cockroach of the sea, and then oh, I think I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. yeah. Keep talking. And and then they ended up, uh, they started selling it as a delicacy to the rich folk. Um, I think it was like during the Great Depression or something like that, and it just caught on like wildfire. And then ever since, it's kind of been like a quote unquote delicacy. I think it's way too chewy. It's fucking. I mean, any any part of it. I mean, the the claws are supposed to be the best part. But I've never been to a place that offers the claw meat as as an option to eat. Mm. It's always the lobster tail, you know that that kind of shit. Um, I've never liked it. It says cockroaches of the sea is an expression of unknown origin that traditionally refers to lobsters. Yep. The bottom feeding crustaceans, generally the bl- um, the blue American lobsters, mm-hmm. have long been a staple in North American diet, possessing yep. nutrients and rich in flavor without the extra calories. Sure. Lobsters weren't always the exquisite delicacy of five-star restaurants, though, and were once as common as cockroaches. 
nowadays cockroaches of the sea has come to represent a variety of creatures in sure. the ocean. Sure, sure, sure. That's crazy. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, I again. So we made it. Yeah. Expensive. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, yeah. that's and that's but that's anything consumer based. Anything that it becomes the niche thing that becomes that like, I mean, fucking coffee, dude. Coffee is it's. Oh yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like it's it's always been a staple of America. But it never became super crazy until Starbucks started branding like all this Have crazy you shit. Ever you know what seen I mean? Like Starbucks' margins? No. On a cup of coffee? I'm sure it's insane. How much? What a uh, a small? What are they? What are the fucking names? Grande, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Grande, I, Venti, and the only one I know is Venti because I only I don't drink coffee first and foremost. I love. Coffee. Um, I more power to you. I think it's awesome. Did, there's you something enjoy about your the taste. Uh, crustaceans of the sea or whatever. The <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, right. Yeah, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> no, there's, there's, there's just something about the, the the taste of coffee that doesn't do it for me. Like and and I don't also get the the jacked feeling of of taking it and being focused. It makes me sleep. Okay, it, so, I know people that will drink yeah, it to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. and and but I won't, if I'm gonna do that, I want to drink something that tastes good. <laughs> so what was your story but, about venti? You mentioned oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah, venti. venti. Uh, I only ever drink anything from Starbucks, and it's like the the berry refresher thing, like the total bitch drink. Oh that's, yes, but that shit has a bunch of caffeine that for some reason does what it's supposed to do to me, as opposed to coffee that doesn't. So the, I'm not sure the how that smallest works. cup of coffee that you can get is a really tiny little bitch. It's like three fifty, I think. Okay. From from Starbucks. Sure. It takes about five cents to make that cup. I'm not surprised by that at all. That is like a three hundred percent margin. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like anyone who knows anything about business, that's ridiculous. One hundred percent. And the amount anything over a hundred well, anything to a hundred is ridiculous. Sure. But anything over a hundred is like what the coffee fuck? is one of the largest margins. Yep. And not all coffee places has that kind of margin, sure. but I don't know what Starbucks <laughs> did, but yeah, they have like a five, oh, yeah. five cent on average per cup. Is yeah. That, oh yeah. That's be, crazy. Be, they, they, they make just, bank off They that. made it convenient and fast. That and was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. full of calories. Yeah. Yeah. Full of a bunch of bad shit, but they did it and they marketed it so well that they, it, it became what it's become. I mean, it's, I mean, I guess an analogy for the, the marketing thing that's made them as big as they is, as they are is, you know, the difference between the NBA and the WNBA. You market the fuck out of something and you have a good product, you're going to fucking succeed. Sure. And you can have the same product that might not be as, as awesome because, I mean, I, I think the, the women's NBA is awesome. I support it. I, I can't watch the games. They're not, so they're not you don't entertaining support me. It then. <laughs> I, no, I'll watch it. I'll watch it if it's on, but also I don't go out of my way to watch it. You know sure. what I'm saying? So that, but that's not supporting it. Okay. Be- touche. Touche. But, and the reason why I think of this, Bill Burr has a new special. Oh, love him. I love Bill and Burr. And he yeah. literally talks about this. It just came out yeah, like a actually, couple days ago. I think I saw the clip for where it. he said like the WME fails because women, you don't support your own. Yeah. yeah. Like you don't go to the games. See, you don't yeah, buy the, yeah, you, you don't, don't buy the merchandise. Super jersey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. You. Yeah. But, that, but, and that also goes back to marketing though. Like, they don't have the marketing power that the the regu- the NBA has. But what is there to market? I think there's like three girls that have ever dunked in the WNBA. Yeah, and I don't mean this in a bad way. No, no, no. But I, like, but, but it's it's the facts. I used to watch the WNBA because I was a huge Diana Taurasi sure. fan. Okay, and cool. they there's there's I was a huge basketball fan. Yeah, and their season is it kind of overlaps with the NBA. Yeah, but it mostly doesn't. Yeah, so, and so it's when there's no other basketball, exactly. exactly. So I would watch it, but I remember. And that's even, what I say about when I, when I watch it, it's literally cause it's the only sport on. Yes. And, and, I, and, it and, I, and I need a sport and it's not exactly. I and remember it, watching and going like, it, I hope when Diana Taurasi would get taken out of the game, I would go like take a shot, yeah, make yeah. some food. <laughs> yeah. Do whatever. Oh, 100%. I mean, my, my brother, my brother and I were talking about this the other day, also named Will. For people that don't know. Uh, so right. if he's referencing Will, it's not me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it might be. Will with one L, not two. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, we were talking about it the other day and he's like, dude, it's it's hard to market something that when you have the the opposite of the same sport doing all these crazy dunks, all these mm, crazy shooting, yes. all this stuff. And then you watch a WNBA when it's not the superstars of the WNBA, it feels like you're watching a JV team play another JV team. Yeah. And, and and again, I'm not shitting on any of the athletes because it does take skill to get there. They do make way more money than I do doing what I do. You know, like they, they, they're succeeding in their own right. But to make the argument of, of pay and everything, whenever they're the WNBA's marketing team doesn't do enough for them, you know, it's hard, it's hard to justify, you know, them getting quote unquote equal pay at, like the NBA does. You know what I mean? Like, 
you have to. I think they deserve it. Yes. First of all, women have to support other women and yes. not just with a post online. Sure. Like, if you want women to prosper, watch the games, go yeah, to the games. Them. Yeah. Yes. Buy the like, tickets. Absolutely. Sure. And I know that's easier said than done. 100%. But I can think about some things that women dominate mm-hmm. um, that men don't. And, and those people make a lot of money. And I'm mm-hmm. not trying to be sexist at all, but modeling. Like, sure. Name the number one top male model. <laughs> I don't even know. Couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you either. I, but I, I can I name you like 20 females sure. for sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, porn. Women mm-hmm. make way more than men. Sure. And again, I'm going to sound sexist. I just named two like visual Very things. sexualist. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Sexualized. Because men will but. pay for visual stuff. See, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm saying this to make a point, which is this that- is marketing. You have to find out the things that women are better at than men and market the shit out of that. And yeah. there is a ton of them. I'm not saying oh, there's not. Absolutely. I'm saying that that's what you identify. And you're absolutely right. Why would I watch some- chick do a finger roll and miss it when I can watch Dwayne Wade dunk it from the free throw line. Yeah. Like that's Oh dude, whenever whenever you you see a dude fucking Nero step, switch it back and then switch it back again all in one jump. Yes. That's ridiculous. From wherever the fuck they are. Or fucking Steph Curry shooting from half court 30 feet behind <laughs> the fucking line. Yeah. Yeah. From out from in the fucking locker room and making a swishing a fucking three and these girls are missing from you know inside the paint. Like and again, again I'm not bashing on him, but it's hard to market that and, and be successful. I think one avenue that I can think of right off the bat that women have a huge opportunity in is MMA. No, oh, absolutely. Ronda proved that. Sure. And as an MMA fan, there's tons of women in the, M- in, in the MMA, in the UFC. <laughs> I was about to sound like a casual fan. I watched the in MMA. In the MMA. <laughs> in the MMA um, that are brilliant. Like oh, I absolutely. love watching some of these girls fight. And there's a huge market there. And I, I think agree. I think not only is there a big market there, I think people are craving the next Ronda Rousey. Oh yeah. And, and I love Nunez. I don't think she's it. She she was it until she started just looking like she was being lax, which in all fairness, she wasn't getting a whole lot of talent against her that to would. me, she's the female Khabib. No one no one will respect Ooh. Khabib the way they respect Connor, even though Khabib's a better fighter. No one will respect Nunez as much as they respect oh, Rousey, okay. even though Nunez is we the need better a, fighter. We need, a, we need to take a few steps back, first and foremost. Do uh, you think Khabib is a better fighter than Conor? 100%. I think he proved that when he beat him. Okay. Uh, in, I mean, well, I guess since MMA is everything and he predominantly used what he's good at to beat him, yes, he is the But did he the not outbox him in that fight, too? He dropped Conor McGregor. I mean, he did drop him. I can't argue that. So I'll give Connor this. He okay. probably won the only round I've ever seen Khabib lose. Yeah. So he was fair. for sure good. Sure. But he's the better fighter. He yeah. proved that in the I fight. Mean, but yeah, no one cares. Don't. You talk to 10 people on the street, one of them knows Khabib, all yeah, 10 because, know Connor. Yeah, because people are so social media driven and, and sucked in their fucking phones. They see Connor talking shit. They think it's entertaining. And his highlights are funner. That's I would fair. much rather watch Connor knock out Aldo in 12 seconds oh, than watch yeah. Khabib throw someone against the cage for five rounds, which oh, he did for most of his which career. Which, as MMA fans, we appreciate. Sure. People that are rich, yes. I love it. So, oh, dude. Yeah. by the way, I'm glad uh, I love said jiu-jitsu that. shit. Oh, it sounds God. like I'm talking so shit sexy. about Khabib. I'm oh, not no. at all. Oh, yeah. I, every, I, love I mean, wrestling. I do talk a little bit of shit on Khabib because his undefeated whole thing and everything, like, it wasn't, it was in the regional scene. It was, it was a lot of semi unproven shit. Like, yeah, he beat Connor. Um, and he beat a few other somewhat bigger names, but there was so much talent for him to fight, and he never he defended done. it. His resume doesn't. There were exactly they, there was an argument for them that to, he was a better fighter than Jones pound for pound. No way, and, fuck no. And even if you believe that, which Jones has one loss, and it's not even a loss. I yeah. hope he gets rid of it. Yeah, it was the downward elbow. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. On the Matt Hamill six to uh, t- uh, twelve to six or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, which he dominated him. So yeah. I don't even count that. Yeah, I agree. But the resume is ridiculous for Jones and oh, yeah. it is and and could be be what you put Gaethje on the list yep. Poirier yep. C- Connor on mm-hmm. the list I can't even think of exactly, another big name but that's what I'm saying I'm sure like, there's another one we're missing sure but, but sure like four at most and like, then he's done yeah exactly you 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 can't be a pound for fa- pound for pound best much less a one of the best at that weight class to ever do it in my mind until you defend it at least five times. I mean, fuck, man. Against like, different types of yes. opponents. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Everything. I, I want I, you to dominate everybody so thoroughly that you go through it a second time even. I mean, fuck. Dude. Sure. Like, it doesn't, you don't need that necessarily, but it cements you. I mean, Silva did it fucking as, as much as, as much hate as Adesanya is getting, he's doing it. I mean, he's been beating everybody. He is. And he had I a mean, boring last fight. Yeah. And he which had boring, it was, I agree. He had 
two or three boring fights recently, which I think yeah. give him a bad name. But he did sure. win those boring fights, yes. so we have to give him that. Yeah. And let's not forget, Silva had some too. Oh, one hundred percent. Oh, dude, Silva's fight last ever. three fights. <laughs> Silva's last three fights. People forget it was a lot of him fucking doing the showboaty thing, and then like I'm better than you, and then not doing anything. Well, he got beat up by Chell Sun in a whole fight oh. one time, and then and it was a lucky ass. Second. Yeah, it was a lucky. 30 and then second beat him again, triangle. yeah, decisively. So he he. He, but that little fire. He fought. Was it Chris Lieben? There was a guy he fought. No, Lieben was his first one. He that was a kick to Lieben. the face. Yeah, he fought someone, and it was like he got booed out of the arena. Yeah, yeah. And went to decision. He won, and it oh, was like fuck. it was the least amount about, of strikes but... thrown. And hell, someone recently beat it. Yeah. Um. But for, yeah, right. Like, I know. Silva had some bad ones. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. still. I would put Silva over Khabib. Yep. I would put Kamaru Usman over Khabib. Absolutely. I put GSP over Khabib. Absolutely. Those, That's not even an argument. Jones. Those yeah. four right off the bat. Sure. I bet I can think of a few other ones. I would honestly say Mighty Mouse in his t- Ooh, in his tenure, he had I, a long streak I and he fought everybody. Him. Yes, you forget about him, him because Khabib. he was he he was the smallest. Well, he, weight yeah, class. he was the smallest weight class, and no one took him seriously because there wasn't knockout power. That motherfucker was dominating every aspect well, no of one, the game. What is he? One twenty five. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nobody yeah. had knockout power at one twenty five. Exactly. But but because of that, people didn't view him as as marketable. The UFC didn't view him as marketable. So he's they killing it in Japan. Oh dude. Oh he killing is it. murdering in Japan. Yeah. He is fucking murdering in Japan. If he were to come back, granted he's a little probably past his prime, and I don't think he could beat uh Volk or right. It's Volk in that weight class now. Or no no no. no. Volk, Volk is forty five. Forty five. Yeah, so yeah yeah yeah. No two. Um, uh, yeah. Who's, yeah, twenty five is um. Oh shit! I, Moreno just lost oh, to Figueroa, right? right? Yeah. Which I think I think he got chipped on that one. Fight. Oh, he they did. have to. Yes. Yeah, Moreno dominated him the majority of the third fight. Yeah, and, and I mean like who's dominated. the thirty five champ right now? Ah, uh, shit. Because forty five is Volk. I I, I'm, I thought Volk was thirty five and forty five. I thought he had he's two. one. More really? Right I thought he was a double champ. He just beat Holloway again. He's oh talking yeah yeah. About, I know he beat Holloway. Yeah. He's talking about fighting again. Uh, yeah, he's talking about bumping up yes, to 55, 55 right? Yeah, which I think, Gaethje, who I think is fighting he, Islam Makachev. Yeah, what a great fight! That's gonna be a great fight. Yes. I think, dude, I think Makachev is is the future, but I don't think he can beat. I don't think he can beat the number one. I I just don't. Do Do you think he beats Oliveira? Let's start there. No, I think he does. No, I think he does. And I will admit that I, I okay. I've <laughs> I've gone against Oliveira every single fight. Yep, and, and he's. he's He's rubbing like, it in your fucking face. I hate, after the last one, I'm like, all right, there's like, I got to And then when I saw he's fighting Islam, I'm like, God damn it. I think he loses that. See, I, and I agree. I, I don't like Oliveira because of the missing the weight and acting like he's hot shit and all that other stuff. Right. I don't even mind that. I don't even really. Mind okay. That. Yeah. Well, because I don't think he missed the weight there. Did you see the whole he, thing where they fuck with the scales, the yeah. UK guys or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and he doesn't have a history. Khabib missed weight all the time. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> Oliver in, earlier in in his career, I watched a, a couple of videos by a MMA junkie. Okay, I yeah. love those. Yes. Um, but I watched a couple, and his whole entire early career was plagued by him missing weight. Oliver's. So him not making it didn't surprise me necessarily, but also it also made me kind of mad because he had been making it so consistently recently. Got you. Yeah. And I mean, it's for it's it's for your belt, bro. Like, how are you gonna? Which again, they them fucking with it makes sense and. You know, it is what it is. He's going to come back. I mean, he he won the the basically the right to fight for it again and yeah, continue you, being yeah. the champ. I just he's one of those generational talents in a certain field that I think is going to be able to beat just about anybody that they put in front of him. I think I saw weaknesses in all three of his last wins, including sure. the Michael Chandler fight. Yeah. Uh, oh, Chandler Poirier. Chandler put it close for sure. Yes. And it and he got rocked. Yeah. He, you know, he got rocked in all. Who oh, did yeah. fight last that he lost to or he won? Sorry. So, oh, was it Poirier or Gaethje? He fought one of those guys last. Um, it, it was Poirier, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. Uh, either way, like he got. I, I see. Like see. there's like holes in his in his game. Uh-huh. But the issue is like I don't think he's gonna get a chance to even touch Islam the way he wants to touch him. I think his pressure is so good. He, okay. He's a lot like Khabib, and Khabib is the guy that you hate to watch him fight. He's a little bit boring, but he gets the job done. Oh, Al Jermaine Sterling is 35, by the way. There, That's we who go. there, there it is. Okay. Just, and Peter Jan. Right got it. And, and, Peter Jan's fighting Sean O'Malley. Yeah. And, and which is Sean O'Malley's going to get his ass beat. I think so too. Oh, and I'm so nervous because I, I, love, I, love, I love, yeah, I love, I love but, O'Malley, but he's going to get his ass beat. And Aljo's fighting uh, Gaethje, right? I don't know. I thought it was Aljo fighting Gaethje. Gaethje wouldn't go to 35 though. You're right. Gaethje would. Hold would, on. Let, he's let at 55 see. now. Let's see. Uh, Oliveira fights. There we go. <laughs> Um, because I'm pretty sure. Let's see, last fight. 
Last win was May seventh. Uh, it was against Gaethje. Poirier was the second. Okay, so he beat yeah, Poirier he beat, and then he, he, he beat, beat Gaethje. Yeah. yeah. So I I agree that the stand up pressure from from uh, Makachev is gonna is gonna rock him, but any any type of grappling anything Oliveira is gonna murder anybody. I I just don't think that. I think I think you're he, true about almost everyone else but Islam. Yeah, you think so? You think he has the strength to just manhandle out of the I think, submissions and I think shit? He's, he's stronger than Oliver. Um, sure. And Oliver is a jiu-jitsu guy. He's not a wrestler. Oh, yeah. He's a guy that will lay on his back yeah. and let you jump into Gladly. his guard. He's like, come, come here, baby girl. Oh, absolutely. I, exactly. So, I, look, I, I, again, he's going to prove me wrong, and I'm going to look like an idiot when this comes out. I wouldn't say an idiot. But <laughs> but, but Islam, has his pressure is amazing, and his yes. wrestling is amazing. His pace is Those also insane. Those sambo guys, yeah. they, if, they wrestle different. Oh, People yeah. don't know the difference. When you watch a wrestler, who's a, a top-notch wrestler? Like uh, Chandler was, but he didn't wrestle in that fight. I'm trying mm. to think of another... A guy, uh, Daniel Cormier. I, I know it's a heavyweight, yeah. but the way he wrestles, his technique it's, is amazing. It's Greco Roman. Those type Sambo shit, guys, right? yeah, they they're they're just different. It's yeah. more of a grippy chest to chest, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and it's pressure that shit. in yeah. every single position they get you in. Mm. They're throwing punches until you get out of it. They and get you, they, they'll take control and then punch yep. again. Those oh, wrestlers will will transition just to transition again, yeah. and which is beautiful as well. Sure, it's sure. a different style, but it's a it's a, it's a difference between a. A, uh, a a regular combat sport and an actual combat sport. Yes, which I, I hate to like split the the martial arts up like that, but wrestling wasn't intended for you to fucking Strike punch people. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't intended for you to beat the shit out of somebody. It was intended for you to get somebody in a, a compromised position where you can pin them. Yes, right. I, yeah. I wrestled for years. I I know the basics of that shit. So, so it wasn't like I I knew everyone's like, oh, you you know how to wrestle, you know how to fight, right? I'm like. It helps me take you down to where I can beat your ass. <laughs> but if you're standing up, I have no idea what to do against you. And you know what I mean? Until I start doing that. Yeah, exactly. Is there so many aspects? So we yeah. we all thought Ronda Rousey would never lose. Oh, f- and then next thing you know, Holly Holmes kicking her beat, in her face, man. Beat her shit. And it's like that. So I don't know. We'll see. And I know we kind of got lost in this because of yeah, the yeah. women. Sure, sure, sure. And we'll, uh, speaking of the women, we have a big fight coming up on Saturday. Oh, dude. And uh, Nunez we- Bennett, too. Nunia, N- Nunia, N- Nunia. <laughs> Nunia business. Wes, who's fighting? <laughs> Nunia uh, yeah. is fighting Juliana Pena. Cheers to that. And I called the first fight. Mm-hmm. I called that Pena would win. And I told Daryl, I wrote him and I said, because we put money. We on talked about fights. it too. Yes. And you're like, yeah, Pena's going to beat her. I was like, no fucking way. Nobody believed me, by oh, the way. No. And, and I also want to throw this out there. I am very notorious for not picking fights correctly. Oh, I know. I know you <laughs> so, are. So when I'm bragging, it's because I finally nailed one. You did one. it. Yeah, you, you got it. So that, was, a, that a boy. It's a humble brag. <laughs> yeah, sure. But I've been watching Juliana Pena since she was on the Ultimate Fighter. Sure. And I knew. Oh, she's legit. I knew when I picked Pena to win, it wasn't even fully because I knew she would win. Yeah. It was because I knew if anyone could win, it would her be her. style would sure. win. Oh, yeah. Now, with that being said, I don't think she wins this Oh, fight. no, absolutely not. I, I think, think the best she lit thing a fire. Happen, the best thing to happen uh, to uh, to uh, Nunez is that she lost. Oh, one hundred. She will make ten times more money than she's yep. ever made. Absolutely, to have her best performance. Yeah. I think we will see the most amazing uh, Nunez we've ever yeah, seen. The most conditioned, the most serious, focused. I think this is going to make her resurgence and her career in in a total argument of being the best pound for pound fighter. Period. Men and female, like and lose, eventually losing that fight guaranteed that she'll i thought she might retire yeah it guaranteed that we'll now see her two more times at least at least because i think she wins uh, i guess we could be wrong if yeah she loses, sure, right? sure sure but if she wins then they're going to rematch that and then she'll make even more money yep. and then maybe by then one of these other girls will come up I, I even if they do though until she gets to that point where she starts getting the fragile chin i don't think she'll have an issue for five more fights or however long she's willing to actually continue to fight she could fight for a long time yeah oh yeah. i mean she's young yeah, I just don't like. She, she has a kid now. She's yeah. She's oh pretty yeah, much she wants marched to march through all those girls. Yeah, the one other fight I want to see again, maybe is Shevchenko. They fought twice already. People forget that <sighs> Shevchenko was a lot younger. So yeah. was Nunez. Um, and Shevchenko is dominant at her weight Dude, class. She, I don't see why they would ever catch weight. She again. she's hands down top five pound for pound fighter men and men and women right now. She I think she lost that last fight. Did you watch it? Yeah, I and I, she, I she, get it. she coasted. It she was coasted. close, yeah. But I, I'm not gonna lie. Like I was like, she lost. This oh, fight. dude, yeah. No, I, I was thinking somewhat similar, but also, it's been proven time and time again, especially in recent years. 
if you're the champ and you coast by and the challenger doesn't do enough to challenge it, it's going to be the champs regardless. Yeah. I mean, well, fuck. We have a few recently that. Exactly. Like the Moreno fight oh, with Figueroa. Which is bullshit. Which and, Moreno uh, was Rose, the champ. Rose so. versus Carla Esparza. God. Yeah, that was Boring awful. fight, but just give it to Rose. She's already yeah. a champ. Yeah, exactly. Those are the two fights recently which, where I'm like, you I hope to the champ. God that Rose fucking pulls her head over her ass because. She's so good. She is such an incredible fighter. Well, I mean, and then she's coming off that amazing win where with she, Whaley and all those others. So well, that she's just she knocked. Head kick knocks her out, yep. and then rematches her, and then just destroys her for five rounds. Yeah, and, wins and, and I mean, it wasn't even destroying; it was a total annihilation. It was beautiful. Like, yeah. Oh, and then to follow that up beautiful. with this Barza fight, exactly. I was like, oh, oh, dude, exactly. And I, I was like, hype that fight up. I'm notorious for doing that. Like people that don't watch MMA, I'm like you gotta see this girl. She's dude, amazing. Every time I, I just it, stopped recommending. I'm like, I'm like yes, <laughs> I do. I'm like, yeah. So uh, hey, there's gonna be some fights this weekend. I don't know how good they're gonna be. And then whenever they're good, I'm like, see, I told you. But every time I I try to hype it up. Because it should be on a card, it should be so good, right? Yes. Like, I mean, the the fucking Gaethje and Khabib fight. Yeah. I hyped it up because Gaethje just beat was on the living tear. shit out yeah. of his last opponent, which I don't even remember who it was at the time. He was knocking everyone out. Everybody, and and it wasn't like he was just like you know dancing around. Fuck. He was blood and guts, just fucking railing on people and keeping the pressure, and they he just could beat uh, it. Tony Ferguson's that, first loss on like a 13 win yeah, streak or something. Yeah, yeah. which was insane because Tony Ferguson's a fucking freak. He's crazy. Oh, I hope he comes back, oh, by the way. That I head kick too. by Chandler. And, oh, ugh. I don't think he will. If he does, he won't be the same. He, he, I don't think he's ever been rocked that fucking hard. He's, he's, he is psychotic, that guy. Yeah. And prime Tony Ferguson is terrifying. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, any of the clips you watch, you're like, and and to find out that he 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 hasn't sparred, actually sparred sparred, in like seven years or some ridiculous. I shit. I think he should never spar again at the rate he's been. Yeah, well, I mean, like you gotta just stop. Well, yeah, but he hasn't in the last like several years. Well, a lot of guys are doing that now. A lot of the veterans guys, like Holloway, does oh, that. Oh, sure, like, that's where he's smart. Like, There's though. no point in yeah, sparring. Yeah. When you're young, you kind of have to spar. But well, yeah, you gotta learn shit. The amount. Have you ever have you ever done any? Yeah. I know you did wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I when I did MMA fighting sparring. There's this weird thing. I'll never forget it. One of the first gyms I went to uh-huh. here, um, I was in high school, and it, was a, it wasn't even a real gym. It was a guy, he called it Martinez Inc., and his name okay. was James Martinez. Uh-huh. His brother runs Bone Crushers here in town, Marty, uh-huh. who I ended up training at eventually. But I was there with him. I know, I know the Martinez's. Okay. Yeah. And so that was my trainer for my first sure, fight. Sure, sure. And uh, we were there, and uh, there's a, like you spar. And yeah. so they, they give you a head thing and then some gloves. And they're like boxing gloves, but a little bit smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you don't know. I remember, no one told me like they're just like all right, like let's see what you got. Yeah. And I'm like, am I trying to like kill this guy? Like, what am I? Yeah. They, they are you going fifty percent? Are you going a hundred? Are you well, going then they fucking ten? So like, then after a while, I'm yeah. getting popped, and I'm like, I feel like I'm hitting way less than this guy is. So then I asked the coach, like, what are you doing? They're like, yeah. oh, um, he's training for a fight, so let's go seventy five. But what does that even mean? Yeah. If for I somebody took you outside right now and I said punch me seventy five, you'd be like. Do I even, how do you even know what 75 well, is? Well, after, after, I mean, I, a little bit of my MMA background, I did some kickboxing and some other shit throughout the year. So I actually do, but I get what you're saying though. Anybody off the street or anybody that has yeah, like. Yeah, it was like my first time. Yeah, exactly. You and don't so, know dick, dude. And then you're just like. And then you're trying to be fast because you're like, yeah. you're trying to get. So but when you're trying to be fast, you're like, you can't go like, you just, yeah, you, you just have to don't learn feel it. like you have to. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's a weird thing. So then you end up getting it's hurt all or hurting someone else. Yep. So. A lot of these guys that would happen it to should them, be where fundamentals. They, you would get an injury just sparring. Yeah. And so I get where like the really good guys stop doing. Oh, one hundred percent, absolutely. Especially, I mean, a lot of the training camps and stuff, all the interviews and stuff. They're like, oh yeah, we brought a bunch of young guys in, and that's yeah. where they get injured because yeah. it's the young guys that don't know. But anybody that's a big name that's made it for themselves, they're not going to be a fucking training camp person for another big name. Like yeah. most of the time, they're defending or. Or trying to get to that belt themselves. So it's only young guys that are ever in the training camps. Plus you get two men, testosterone. Like, yeah, especially uh, if you get popped a few times. You're, you're like, like, fuck I'm this gonna, guy. I think I'm going to go 85 on this next <laughs> bunch. <Yeah. laughs> oh, dude, absolutely. There was a couple times that fucking, I, I was, it was straight up basics for kickboxing. And, and it was, a, it was over at uh, Maximum Martial Arts. Like it was a very short period of time that I was doing it because I just couldn't afford to at the time. And this guy was, I mean, he was being a fucking dick. Like he, he had already had like a couple colors on his belt. I was a white belt, like fucking, but I, I know the basics of how to throw a punch and a kick and stuff like that. So it wasn't like I was a total newbie. Right. And, and he, he wasn't, it wasn't like he was training for anything. He was just sparring hard. I don't know if it's cause I was bigger than him or because I wasn't like, you know, like a, a, a new recruit, like all scared and shit, <laughs> but like we were kind of going and he like, 
kicked me a couple times. I was like, son of a bitch, that kind of fucking hurt. Yeah. And, and uh, like one of the times I was like, dude, like chill, we're, we're sparring. He's like, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And then he fucking rocks me. And I get pissed. And I didn't know how to handle it. So I fucking go over there and I just fucking elbow. And they're like, we don't do that here. I was like, it's a big no-no. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but. I was caught up in the moment. Guy. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, I was like, talk to this guy. You just rocked my shit. He it's made like, you look like the, the oh, one that 100%. broke the gym yeah. yeah, 100%. And I got reprimanded and all this shit, which, you know, it is what it is. But as a, as a young guy, especially when you don't know anything and some older guy that's supposed to be giving showing you the ropes beats your ass, it's like, hmm. You know, and I, I feel like there's like gym bully mentality kind of thing that goes with it. Sure. Especially uh, you when know. you're the new guy. Oh, especially, especially when you're the bigger new guy. Yeah, that's always the worst true. part. Well, I, I learned to respect people's sizes in the gym for sure, because yeah. there were some little guys that would just fuck people oh, up. Dude. Like, and it didn't matter. Some of them were like, fuck you up through punches. Some of them were just better jujitsu guys. Oh yeah. But you just learned that like, you cannot judge a book by its cover oh, 100% some of the, like you, Roy Nelson in the UFC some <laughs> yeah. of these guys are like you saw him out and about you, it's a guy country. with a mullet and a big belly yeah, you're a like, big country oh, these yeah. dudes are knocking dudes out oh bro I mean rest, uh, high school wrestling did that for me it was uh, yeah you learn yeah. Oh, dude, anything my, like physical like that huh? oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> I mean the only way you learn in those things are by getting your ass beat yeah but it, there's a difference between being taught a lesson in in a, a practice round or match as opposed to like sparring and them like actually physically hurting you. you know yeah. What I mean, like, or at least I think there is. Here's a funny story. So Ooh. I talked to Ready? you a little bit earlier about my first MMA gym. Mm -hmm. And in high school, uh, when I went to Oñate, I played basketball and I had a roommate. His name was John Maddox. Okay. This guy's a Golden Glove boxer from Connecticut. Oh, fuck. He ends up going on after this story. Um, he's a military guy. He, his dad was a colonel. Um, at White Sands in the mm -hmm. military base. Mm -hmm. And so he was destined to be a military guy too. He sure. ends up going on to West Point Military Academy oh, cool. and he wins the entire boxing tournament. They have a big tournament oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. He wins it as a sophomore, his sophomore year. I think he wins it again <gasps> junior what? year and then just doesn't even compete a senior year because he just wanted someone else. Yeah. Really good boxer. That's badass. And so prior to that, he was already a Golden Glove boxer from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. He moved here. Yeah. He, he didn't have any friends. I met him. And we had, uh, I was really good at basketball and he was a really yeah, good boxer. Yeah. And I had done some boxing younger, but sure. he was like, on oh, level. oh, dude. Yeah. And so, and I lived with Daryl and Yvonne at the time. <laughs> I ran away from Daryl and Yvonne's house and he says, come live with me. I live with them on base. Yeah. Like on the military no base. No way. And the deal was that he would drive me to school every day. Mm -hmm. And then if I helped him make the basketball team, which he wanted to do, that he would train me boxing there oh, at, that's the, at, at, um, at White Sands. Sure. I said, yep. For sure. Absolutely. And I was like, I would help him with basketball, but I was, I was so into boxing, man. And so he was trained me. I got pretty good at that. And then one day he said, Hey man, there's a, a gym here in town where they do MMA. Sure. I'm going to go. I think you should go. Yeah. And he told me the name of the gym, the gym. And it was the Martinez yeah. Inc one. Uh -huh. And there was a guy at the time and I won't say his last name, but his name's yeah. Nick. Okay. And me and him, I had a history. Uh. He had jumped a few <laughs> friends of mine at a party uh -huh. and me. He didn't like me. There That's was a like cruises, huge baby. <laughs> yes there's a huge beef there and uh -huh. i heard he went to that gym uh -huh. and i knew he was a good fighter but i knew he went to that gym so i told him i said hey i don't think i'm gonna go with you yeah. uh you know that guy nick he goes there yeah yeah and he goes man I, i've been there a few times yeah he doesn't go there like he, he must not go there anymore sure sure but just come by we'll go so i end up going with him i meet a guy named lloyd who's one of my best friends now Hell yeah. um billy cologne who fights here in town joe torres came and trained out of there for a little mm -hmm. bit and i'm like cool first day we're in there training. Guess who fucking <laughs> walks in the gym is Nick, bro. Like, and this guy nice. was like known for like beating guys up. Yeah. And I like had very minimal fighting training, you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And he saw me and he was, was like fresh meat. Yeah. He's like, all right. And I was kind of terrified because this guy was known for like getting in street fights and just beating the shit out of guys. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, man. And then John was like, my bad. And yeah. in my head, I'm like, fuck. And then, <laughs> so then he was, there's this tension and we're doing circles and then we're doing like different yeah, uh, yeah, drills. Yeah. Workouts. Yeah. Flipping tires. And then we get inside. Word gets around that this there's an issue. They're oh, like, good. Oh, oh you got to squash the, it then, huh? So, so then the coach <laughs> finds out about it. And they do mm -hmm. uh, three minutes in hell is what they call it, where we all get in a circle and you just go at it for yeah. three minutes. If you uh, tap the guy out, whatever it is. Somebody else jumps in. No, 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 stay no, in? no, 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 oh, okay. no. It's over, but then you keep going for your three. Oh, so like if, okay, if yeah, I yeah. get dropped and you get up, if he, if I tap out, we get up, you keep going. Keep going. You yeah. do your three minutes. And you guys three minutes in hell. Oh, yeah. They're, and they, right off the bat, they're like, let's go Will and Nick. And I was like, fuck. But I, I was in too deep, bro. Oh, sure. And I didn't want to look like a bitch. Oh, 100%. But the, it's the here, whole macho bullshit there. Yes. Yeah. But here's a good part of the story. I was, I was terrified of this guy. Yeah. And his, like all, 
And then I realized, and this isn't putting any shade on him, mm-hmm. but I realized the moment that we got in there, and it wasn't striking, it's just yeah. wrestling. I should have I should have said wrestling sure, sure. and jujitsu. Okay. And we get in there and I realized right off the bat, and I'm not I fought at 185. I weigh like sure. 240 now. Yeah. It was really small. 230, baby. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh I, I realized like I can move this guy around. Yeah, you and I realized some strength. Like, and uh we went at it. Nobody tapped each other out. Yeah. He at one point got me in a rear naked choke and I got out of it like a, a minute and a half Which of is him crazy. almost. Yes. Yeah. Got out of it. I got him in one. Uh-huh. I got him in almost. We went the whole three minutes. Sure. And the moral of the story, like, I'm sure when people listen to it, they're like, oh, he beats this guy up, huh? I yeah. do not. But he also doesn't beat me up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the aura was that he was this amazing fighter. Sure. And he was. But then I realized through that, I'm like, he's just a guy. Yeah. And he's there to get better at this. Mm-hmm. And I'm there to get better at this. Yeah. And after that, he literally shook my hand and we backed out. Someone else did their three minutes. By yeah. the end of training, we were sparring and stuff. Yeah. Never had an issue with the guy ever again. Oh, yeah. It, ever it, again. It's a, it's a level of respect. Anybody that you can get into the ring or any type of sparring situation and you have a uh, amicable, I don't know if that's the right word. Anyways, it is, yeah. You, yeah, yeah, amicable uh, uh, scenario or training session or whatever. You, you come out with a, a newfound respect for a set person, you know, I mean. But it also taught me that, like, I was mostly scared of the stories I was hearing. Oh, sure. I, I didn't have an interaction with him. Mm-hmm. Like, I got beat up at a party, but, like, I got jumped. Like, he didn't, like, beat me up. Yeah. He, like, there's, like, 10 of them and two of us. Yeah. And, like, I'm pretty, pretty sure I got beat up by everyone. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like I had to. You caught a couple of different feet. <laughs> yeah. And so it was just like, yeah. I just thought, like, he was just better than me. Sure. And then I realized. Not that I was better than him, but that I had a shot. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Like it, it's those moments where you realize, like, we're all just people. Oh, yeah. And if you figure things out the right way, like, it, like you, you got to respect the guy you're fighting. Sure. Because on a different day, he beats me up at a party. But on that sure. day, like, you held your own. If I had a few extra, like, maybe an extra minute, I think I would have got him. And sure. I'm sure if you asked him, he would say the same thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, we are often our own worst enemies where we either build our opponents up to being something way larger than they are, or we doubt our own abilities to where we are like, Oh yeah, this guy's going to beat my ass. Yeah. And then you, you know, if you've put in the due diligence, that's the beautiful thing about combat sports and uh, about, you know, any individual sport, you, what you put in is what you're going to get out. That's yeah. that's why I want my kids whenever I, I do have them to do individual sports as well as team sports because team sports you know they teach you you know teamwork all that other kind of shit that you're gonna, yeah, yeah camaraderie the, you know that sense of family and all that other shit which is great and it's gonna teach you how to work in a in a company setting or in a, a business setting you know a future shit but the individual sports is where you you find out who you are yeah you're gonna get your ass beat by people that are way better than you and you think you're hot shit and it's gonna it's gonna put you in your place it's gonna see how tough you are and, and your mental strength Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's going to teach you so many different lessons than, than you would in team sport. In team sport, I mean, fuck, man. In in high school, we uh we we should have played for state the state championship. We got we lost in the semifinals or whatever. But for I, wrestling, I, no, it, for, for for football, football. Yes, yeah, sorry, no, yeah, uh, for good. football. Um, and we as a team, we were dominating everybody to that point, up to that point, and. I did everything in my power and we watched through film and everything. There were a few things. Yeah. I, sh- I could have done better, but overall I did the best that i I fucking could. And we still lost, right? You know, it, that's a heartbreak. That's that shit. But in wrestling, in any individual sport, if I get beat, it's chances are I didn't put in enough effort. I you didn't put enough. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't, I wasn't well conditioned. I didn't know my techniques, whatever the situation is. They were better than, do you have and kids? You have, no, not yet. I think you're going to be a great dad. I, I, could, so. I could tell because it's like, that's a hard thing to like, to figure out, but it's also a hard thing to even want, like to yeah. be like, how do I figure out how to give someone something without putting them through hell? Sure. You know sure. what I mean? Oh, like, dude. Yeah. Sometimes I mean, you got to put people in situations to learn, but oh, you gotta make yeah, them I'm not a parent either, yeah, yeah. but I like to hope that like when I'm a parent one day that I find a way to do that without putting them through some of the shit I went through. Oh, sure. And yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure you will, dude. It, it, it's the beauty of parenting is, I mean no one knows what the fuck they're doing. So that's true. Yeah. I mean, let's be real here. Any parent that says they know what the fuck they're doing is either, probably a bad parent. <laughs> well, chances are they're a bad parent or they've, they've already been a parent for so many years that they kind of have it figured out. But anybody that's a new parent, especially if they don't have any like siblings with kids or mm-hmm. any other outside influence, 
they don't know dick about it. Yeah. They're just fucking f- fumbling through just like everybody else is in life. Just but with parenting. things they remember from when they were kids. Yeah. Yeah. That they did. hoped that their yeah. parents did right. That they're doing right now. You know, I mean, it's like, and, and the crazier thing even still is it, it, a lot of it's subjective. Like, you know, what you might think is good parenting that you experience that you think fondly of might not be good parenting to somebody else. Like it, it's, that's the kind of crazy shit about life, dude, is we're all just kind of fucking fumbling get, around. Yeah. That's how you get CEOs and then drug shit. users. Yeah, like that's yeah. the difference between, and yeah. sometimes it's in the middle. Oh yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where life will take me, man, but I like to look back and think um, that the things that have happened in my life, are for a reason. And sure. I, and I'm not spiritual at all. I know you mentioned earlier, you've been to Catholic church. I've mm-hmm. been, I, I've been in so many foster homes, I've been to Catholic churches. I've been to Christian churches. Sure, sure. I've been to a black church where they yell and pass Amen. out. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I've been to shit. like okay, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like I've been, I've been to like a native American sweat lodge. Oh, cool. Hell yeah. I, I've experienced a lot of different stuff and sure. I, I'm not very religious at all, but I do believe in, in the idea that that uh, you decide where you end up. I don't like sure. the idea of final destination because I don't like. I don't agree with it. Either. The idea that I, my where I'm going to end up is set in stone. I like the idea to think that I like to think that I can make some changes and and do oh, something absolutely. different. And so yeah, looking back in my life, man, I always like to think that I did go through everything I went through for a reason, and mm-hmm, it will sure. come out in some other way. Maybe it's not in my life. Maybe it's in my kids or their kids' yeah, kids. Absolutely. Their but kids you're going to pass down the knowledge. Sure. Well, I like to think so. I don't know. I could die right now when we leave this podcast. Yeah, no, for but sure. I just like to think that I left something behind that mattered. Yeah. And I know that like it, you got to put in hard work. You got to be kind. Sure. You got to ask questions. You got to want to yeah, yeah. do all those things. And I used to think a lot when I was younger, almost like a vic- like. I felt like a victim. Sure. I used to tell my friend, I have a buddy that lives in Phoenix and I would text him. I was like suicidal at one point. Sure. And I would text him um, just crazy shit because I knew he would text back. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes, sometimes all you need is an ear. Sometimes, Yeah. Sometimes I was sad and I'm like, I can't tell anyone. I could tell him. Yeah. But sometimes it wasn't even real. Like if I'm being completely like honest, I just knew that I needed some attention and like, my friend would give it to me. He'd be like, don't, don't kill yeah, yourself. Well, yeah, Will. Don't. For and, sure. But, and I'm like, all right, I'll try a, for you. But as a kid that's, that's struggling through life that doesn't have a whole lot of support, it's not necessarily wrong to, to do that because you don't know anybody. I mean, you, you don't feel like yeah. you have anything. Else, I don't think you know it was I mean? wrong. Like, I don't blame myself now as an adult. Sure. But I do think that it's, it was, it I mean, was it, stupid. Yeah. Because I, I mean, don't, it wasn't necessarily fair to your friend to, to it do also that. wasn't fair to me. Like I True. wasn't a victim. I remember thinking like if God was real, he wouldn't do this to me. If, uh, yeah, if, fair. if like these people are just giving gifts, I thought mm. everyone who had more money than me and more stuff was like, yeah. they were just giving it. And then okay. I started realizing like, nah, these motherfuckers work really hard yeah, for this stuff, yeah, yeah. you know? Well, most of the time, not all the time, not yeah, all the time, yeah, yeah, but yeah. more times than, than not sure. like someone who was gifted a bunch of money is like, Way more rare than someone who worked oh, hard. Absolutely. Even the, yeah. sometimes the gift is because someone worked. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Chances are point, it was made. At unless some you point. won the lottery, like you worked really hard for it. Yeah. Or someone did, or yeah, something yeah, happened yeah. there. But I always felt like like I was set up to fail, and I was going to fail. So when people asked me why I was doing bad, I'd be like, "Well, it's because I'm a foster kid." Sure. And then once I changed that mindset, yeah, like I was able to do good for myself. Oh, I yeah. don't feel like a victim at all. I feel like good. I went through crazy shit. But the more I talk to people like you or people sure. on this podcast or people that I meet, I realize everyone kind of does. Oh, yeah. like everyone kind of goes through something. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, you, you find you find what you think is unfair and you see, you know, the, the bare minimum of, OK, well, they're not experiencing it. So it must be until you actually you as you grow older, obviously, you, you gain more of a. Just more perception in general, really. Yeah. And then you start realizing, oh, yeah, maybe it wasn't just, you know, me and maybe I just didn't realize it was other people that were going through the same shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But also there's nothing wrong with having gone through that so long as you don't let it define you later on, which clearly you haven't. And that's awesome that you, you know, sure, you and, become and, the fucking baddest you are. Yeah, buddy. Hey. I appreciate but, that. But yeah, I mean. I'm getting better at accepting compliments, by the way. Had a boy. I'm pretty terrible Look at, at you. it. I'm, but I appreciate I actually, that. No, I always, I always like deflect with humor. I don't, oh, that's I don't me know too. Why. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why I'm like. I'm like what are you gay? <laughs> yeah, I'm like yeah. You oh, sorry. Bitch. Thanks. That was yeah, nice. Yeah, I yeah, said yeah, that. Right. yeah. Um, oh, for I, sure. Dude. I think the most it, the biggest thing to me is it allows me to connect to similar people, which is yeah, why I do the job sure. I do, because I don't I don't just tell them what I read or learned in a class. Sure. I get to explain to them what I went through, but also with this underlying understanding, like I get it. Yeah. I get why you think everyone hates you. I get why you think you got shitty cars sure. because you did. Yeah. You did. 
you for sure got shitty cards. But you can't let it define you afterwards. I promise you there's an opportunity to switch those cards out. Absolutely. Like, that's where I come into play. And I think, yeah. I like to think at least that they recognize that because they know they're talking to someone who went through it as well. Oh, dude. And I think that makes a difference. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. anybody that's experienced even remotely what you're going through and you have credibility with it, they're automatically going to take what your a great words word. for more. That's the word I was looking for. Credibility. Yeah. 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 I mean, shit, man. Like, you know, any anybody that's lost somebody has credibility to somebody else that's lost somebody. Yeah. But it's that person's that you're trying to console's uh, prerogative, really, to accept the level of credibility they have. Because, you know, every, there's a bunch of different losses. You know, you lose your parents. You lose the loved one. Um you know, you lose a friend. It's it's all a different level, but it's still credibility, right? Mm, yeah. Um. So I, I guess it just you know it it just depends on the person that's being consoled to absorb the knowledge being given to them, and then putting them themselves in the person that's confiding in them what they've been through shoes, and measuring it out. You know, and it and it's it all changes with you know whatever they've been through, and you know some people are super jaded, so it takes them longer to accept and realize that that's the case. Um, but over time with the support and the continued support of that said person, you know, sometimes that's what that one person needed to get through it. It, it, the human experience is insane for that particular reason. You have the, you can have people that have gone through the exact same thing. You know, I lost my mom to cancer. I lost my mom to cancer and they mm -hmm. handle it totally different ways. Yep. One of them super destructive to themselves and the other one becomes a fucking public speaker that inspires people to you know, meet other people and power through and yeah. shit, you know, it, it's, they just it's did all mindset. different things with the information they had. Yeah. It, it's, and it truly comes down to mindset and a support system. In I my think opinion, I mean, I don't know. If you're a good person, you have a very high chance of impacting someone unknowingly. Positively. Yeah. Like I, I think if, if I were to sit and I'm sure I can come up with better ones, sure. but if I sit down and like, think about people that impacted me, yeah. some of the moments I think of, I'm like, I don't think they would know Sure, like that person. Yeah. Like, I think if I ever ran in and be like, what the fuck? I, like I, I like, do tried actually my have whole, one. Huh? I, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to know. No, no, I, yeah. I do have one though uh, of this exact situation sure, of impacting it. somebody that I didn't even realize I did until he told me. Um, my, my buddy, his name is Taylor. Um, great guy. I mean, he, he is hands down one of the kindest, most genuine motherfuckers I've ever met in my whole entire life. I uh, went to high school with him, didn't really know him at all through it. He ended up uh, joining my fraternity. We, we became super close. And throughout this whole entire time, um, like, I, I, you, you know my family, and, and for anybody that doesn't, um, we are very open about our emotions. We're very like, hey, I love you. Um, and we expect an I love you back. Uh, not because obviously it's what you say as a family, but because we truly mean it. Sure. We hug each other. We fucking, you know, we shit. I'll, I'll just be laying down. I'll like my mom will put her hand. I'll hold her hand while we're just hanging out at the house. It's not like anything weird or anything. It's just a, a sign of affection. Right. I didn't realize that telling people you love them, giving them hugs, you know, doing the, the minimal amount of affection wasn't normal until my buddy Taylor pulled me aside one day and he's like, Hey man, like, I want to let you know that I, I appreciate what you've done for me. I was like, shit, man. What, like, what do you mean? He's like, well, um, you know, I, I've, I've had a pretty, uh, troubled past and, and, you know, in, in my family, we weren't really, we weren't really cool with telling each other, you know, our feelings, our emotions and stuff like that. That just wasn't normal. And whenever I first got here into college and I heard you telling everybody, Hey, I love you, man. Like, have a good night. I love you. Later. You know, that kind of thing. He thought I was fucking weird. He thought I was an alien. And he's like, what? How, how do I respond to that? Like, yo, are you gay? Like, what's up? You know, like, <laughs> he, he, he genuinely, he, he didn't understand it. And it took me back because I was like, like, what do you mean? It's, I thought that was normal. I thought that was, you know, what everybody did. And it was such a culture shock to me to realize that, you know, not everybody's as fortunate to have a, a loving, just community and much less family around. Yeah. Right. And since then, like we, that motherfucker and I play video games on the regular and we'll, <laughs> we'll literally be like, anytime I get off, I'm like, Hey dude, have a good night. I love you later. He's like, I love you too, bro. And like it, it changed his mindset and hit how he viewed things. Mm. But I didn't even realize I did it. You know what I mean? It, it was just because it's who I am. Like I, I love my friends and I want them to yeah. know that I love them. I love their company. I love who they are. You know, like they're great people. 
And I want them to understand that. And if it means just me telling them, hey, dude, like, you're fucking awesome. Or, hey, you look great. Or, you know, whether we bond over some deep shit or it's just some dumb shit. And I'm like, hey, bro, you look good in them jeans. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> whatever it is. It means the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's a compliment to show them that I noticed whatever work they've been putting in. Or, you know, like, if if I'm worried about them, I'm like, hey, dude, like, you know, I've noticed something's going on. Like, you okay? What's good? You know? And I just never understood and realized that people didn't do that with their close friends. Like some people, I mean, I know it's, it's as we've progressed in the last few, like 10 years or so that I remember a lot of social issues, especially mental health and everything has started coming to the forefront. So people are starting to address it more, Mm -hmm. but I just didn't ever realize that that was weird. Well, also you probably didn't even realize you were doing something helpful. Yeah. Like to you, it was just like, like a basic, oh, like, yeah, welcome bro. to I mean, my house. Hey, yeah, man. Like, <laughs> you're my friend. I fucking love you, dude. Like, what's good? Like, I don't surround myself. Well, I try not to surround myself with people that I don't enjoy being around. Like, I yeah. don't enjoy their company, who they are, and all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? So, like, it never crossed my mind. What a great story, man. And that's glad. I'm glad that that person told you that. Yeah. Because sometimes you're like, 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 I didn't even realize. Like, thanks, man. Because oh, I bet that made you feel good, oh, too. You're dude. like, oh, my God. Like, I impacted oh, you. Like, bro. I thought I was just, like, being some guy. Dude, I fuck. <laughs> I straight up cried. Like, I was oh, all, man. I was like, holy shit. Like, really? He's like, yeah, dude. Like, you, you are one of my favorite people. And, like, I love you, dude. And I was like, fuck. Like, I love you, too, man. Like, <laughs> shit. Like, I don't know how to respond to that. You other go than play this, Xbox? Oh, dude, I don't even know. Dude, that's but, a great story. Yeah, because it's, you. like, it, it's, uh. Like people do need that, man. And it's like sometimes a small thing like that makes someone's day. Yeah. And and uh I bet you did it a million times before he ever told you it meant something. Yeah. Oh dude. I mean, I this was like three or four years down the road in our friendship. Yeah. And I bet from his perspective, you can kind of almost never tell someone that because then you don't know if they're doing it because you brought it up or if it's genuine. Clearly with you it's genuine, yeah, which yeah, yeah, for why sure. I'm assuming he told you years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild, man. I mean, yeah. I think that inspires people to do the small things. I, I, I hope so. I like to remind people. I, first of all, I like to do what I say I'm going to do. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And so, you like, got to be a man of your word, man. Yeah. You I have, have a buddy to. recently that was moving, and I, I remember thinking, it had nothing to do with me. Sure. I mean, maybe a little bit, if I'm being honest. Sure, sure. But I moved my whole life in foster care, mm-hmm. and it sucked, but I got really good at it. Yeah, yeah. And so when he said he was moving, like, ding. Yeah, yeah, I was like, bro, I'll Yo, help I know. you. Yeah, let me and he you. was like, nah, we'll get it. I'm like, dude, I want to help you. Like, yeah. I, like you're a good friend of mine. Yeah. I'm always looking sure, for sure. ways to like help you out. And like, if I can, let me. Yes, yeah. like let me do it. And I did it, and I had fun. And he, same thing, he wrote me, like, dude, I appreciate you. Like, no one yeah. else showed up. Like, I appreciate you helping me. Sure. And to me, it was just like, it was kind of for me because it made me feel good to do yeah. something that I'm good at. But it also was for him because yeah. I think he needed help, and he was like, wow, this guy like. And I made it fun. Yeah. Like, I'm like the Joker guy. Oh, that's yeah, like, I feel that. And one of the it's guy, energy. the guy's, my friend's wife's dad uh-huh. um, only speaks Spanish. Oh, sure, sure. He speaks a little English. Like he gets it. Yeah. He thinks I'm hilarious. <laughs> and I don't know <laughs> this. Yeah. This isn't a that's fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But based off his like body movement, because yeah, yeah. it's the English, sure. every time I say something wild, like he laughs and I'm like, oh, he gets me. Like, <laughs> we don't even speak the same <laughs> yeah, you're, language. You're all shit, he understands. It's so, like, yeah. it's like stressful moving. Oh, sure. And I show up and I'm like, all right, bitches. And junk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you make fun of it, bro. You make it, you make it a good time. Don't smash my wiener in one of these boxes. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just yo, like, yo, watch out now. Yeah. And then by the end of it, they're like, God, like, this is kind of fun. Yeah. Like, we did this chore. Oh, and sure. so um, I would assume it's kind of like that. I'm glad that you show that story, man. Cause yeah, like, I think it's important for people to hear that. Like those things matter. I like, don't think you would mind, basic. but Taylor, if you see it, I hope you don't mind. I love you, brother. Oh, we're, we're putting yes. his face on the thumbnail. Uh, nah. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> we won't even tell him. Well, <laughs> shit, son. I, I honestly, he, I, I don't think he would give two shits. Oh, what but, a great yeah, story. Yeah. He will. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll like it in a good way. I oh think. yeah. I would hope so. I mean, All right. We're getting close to the end here. Are you ready yeah, to wrap this up? How long sure, do you think sure. we've been recording for? Uh, we're pretty close to two hours now. I would imagine. Close. Yeah. Uh, and our one forty-two. Oh shit. Well, I had a lot of fun, man. Did you yeah, have dude. fun? Absolutely. Would you come back on and 100%, do it again? Please. Oh, you let me know. And, uh, for everybody at home, apparently had a few bullet points in case we got a little weird, but we did not touch a single yeah, one of them. Now I get to save it all. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and then some new shit will happen. Like, okay, okay. No, wait, I can never in talk the last about like it. five minutes, we got to bring up at least one. Now I'm curious. Yeah, we had a few things on deck. Just sure, in sure. case the what conversation got boring uh-huh. and it never did. You know what's thanks, funny? Thanks, the, the one thing I brought up was <laughs> yeah. tuna subway. We didn't even fucking talk <laughs> about it. We literally like <laughs> touched on it for like two seconds. Like, You're all, by the way, <laughs> lobster <laughs> is the cockroach of the <laughs> sea. Yep. And then we got lost. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's wrap this up. Yep, yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank Wes you. Bannister, Wes CB, 
Nah, what was the other no, one? Wesley B, baby. Wesley Come B. on now. Get the fuck out of here. Wesley B. Oh, Cardi shit. Get the fuck out of here. Wesley B just and Willie P. Nah, I'm just kidding. No, just, please don't. All right. We are out. Later. Thank you.